What's up? What's up? It's the Arthur Motes experience with Deke. I'm Arthur Motes, and that's my main man, Deke. What's good, bro? Man, life is good. Life is grand. Can't complain today, man. Yeah. What's the word with you, though? I'm doing good, man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah same. I like it, baby. I like it. Yeah, getting back to uh, the busy time of year, man. Shoot. Little man back in the saddle with baseball, got games. So, obviously, that's the reason why today we bumping it up a little bit early. So, that way everybody get the full dose of content. You know, we can't cut the podcast short. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, draft is getting closer. Yeah, it's, it's exciting time, man. It's exciting time, man. So, yeah, man. Definitely, uh, yeah. Except life's good, man. You got any plans for uh, draft weekend? What you got going on, man? Uh well I I'd assume we're doing our oh yeah I mean obviously first round yeah, yeah. <laughs> live stream right yes yeah, yeah you you available still right yeah all right I'm cool, good. cool 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 yeah I well, say so yeah definitely definitely make like sure that. I wasn't making any other plans that I, night you know I did the same I was like Steelers I'm there for this event that we always do but as long as I'm out at this time we're still good because this is what we do this is like our thing so yeah I think I'm a be live streaming the other ones too. Let's uh, yeah. go. I, I know I'm gonna be doing a lot of you said Friday, Report right? Stuff. I know Friday. You said yeah, you got something. I might mess around with Saturday too. We'll okay, see. I know okay. I got a lot of Bleacher Report stuff coming up uh, next week. There's a really cool thing that they're doing. I'm gonna be basically acting as Omar Khan. They're gonna do a Let's 32 go. team mock draft. Okay. Live stream for two two and a half hours, and I'm gonna be representing the Steelers, and they're gonna have 31 other. People like me yeah. representing their teams. Okay, okay, okay. So I'm a, yeah, I'm gonna be in the booth. So since you're picking gonna, number twenty for us, what, what you wearing though? Are you are you gonna be buttoned up like super dressed up since you being Omar, or are you going? Uh, I should like, shave my <laughs> head. <laughs> oh no, don't do that. <laughs> that would be epic, but that's gonna take a little bit of time to get back though. You know what I'm saying? But that would be fire if you showed up with the shaved head, looking like Omar. Oh my god, <laughs> it would be fire. I would have to get some. Yeah, they, they got a bump. Steelers yeah. ownership so, yeah. stake, or uh, Omar would have to hire me Something, for some type bro. of role in the front office. For me to bro. Do that. Yeah, I was like, you shave that hair, bro. That's tough. Like I would need something from yeah. the Steelers. Yeah, I would like to have some say in something. One of the picks this year, perhaps. <laughs> something, or even announce the pick. Eh, no, I won't say. I won't say. All yeah. right, all right. I want to have some sway on like yeah. who we pay. Yeah, hell, it could even be a sixth or seventh round pick. <laughs> But, yeah, I need a little bit of say. I need a little bit of a pull. Yeah, I'm about to say, because the body, that's, woo, that's a tough one. It's a tough one. That would be legendary, though. Old Deke would have done it, I bet. I bet you Old Deke would have done uh, it. Old Deke that took an eyebrow off, bro. So, yeah, I, I, I don't put it to past Old Deke, bro. <sighs> yeah. But New Deke is good. New Deke is wise. Uh, and, like, you know, he's. No, nah, New Deke. Yeah, uh, he's, he's, like, he's like a fine wine. That's what you are now. Back then, you was a white claw. Now you, you, you're, you're becoming a wine. Yeah. New Deke's wack yeah. as hell. <laughs> be honest. I like it, bro. You're smooth, man. You're smooth. Yeah. So it's supposed to be, though. Yeah, so busy uh, two weeks coming up. No, I like Just, that. I man. guess week, really. Week, week and a half. Because you're going to have the post-draft reaction. You know, that's going to be crazy. Yeah. And then Obviously, before you know it, Ricky Mini camps. leading up to the draft. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Got Ricky Mini camps following that. Whether it's that first week or second week after the draft. And then we're going to turn around and they're actually going to be here for them real-life OTA practices. And then, yeah, just, we, just all in this thing, man. This is like the – yeah, it's like we really about to get in this thing now, baby. I like DC53 it. says Old Deke is our goat. Mm. David Dupree says Old Deke would have done it. Yeah. Old Deke for certain would have done it. Old Deke would – yeah. It's a lot of things the Old Deke would have done that. You know what? It's not bad that you're not doing it anymore. It was just a time. Was, you know, that was at that time of your life. Now – you're like wiser, Deke. No, yeah. Like I'm I said, lame. man, you you went from taking shots That's to not. That's a nice not, way to say. No, no, lame. no. You went yeah. from you went from tequila to bourbon. That's what you did. Okay. Sometimes you got tequila. You tequila's fire, but we know tequila ain't as smooth as the bourbon. So that's what they you should use bourbon right now. It's a good vibe, man. Don't 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 regret it. Lean on the memories, though. You got plenty of them. <laughs> Penguins officially out of the playoffs. I did see that. Now, I heard it was a little jankiness. They said that, nah, never mind. They put it in somebody else's hands. And ultimately, that's how the thing goes, man. Yeah, Flyers yeah. pulled their goal. Yeah, that's what I was like. Game. <laughs> said it was a little jankiness at the end of it, bro. How'd you feel about that? Do you feel like that was intentional or that was just some fluky they just got got? 
because yeah, I that was definitely the part. Way on yeah. It. <laughs> I don't know enough about the hockey culture to know if they would do something like that. But because it was Philly, I'm like, I don't put it past them. Right. You know? That's the thing. I don't but put it past them. I'm sure they would have reveled in the idea of potentially knocking off the Capitals. True. And, and doing it on their own accord because they, they were the ones like actually playing them. Yeah. Like they're rivals with the Capitals. Mm -hmm. Maybe not to the degree that they're rivals with the Penguins. Yeah. I could see the case for either side. I I just feel like probably for them, they're just like we got nothing to lose. Yeah. Like screw Let's it. Go Let's for it. Try to give ourselves an advantage to score yeah. a goal and try to knock the Capitals off here. No respect, respect. That's what my guess would be, but I'm definitely not opposed to the conspiracy. I'm not opposed to that at all. I'll fan those flames. Yeah, yeah. I was cool. With it. I was like, you know, I'm, I'm all for seeking comfort in other sports. So I was like, yeah, you know what? Yeah, why they do that, bro? That is a little question. So yeah. Pirates are having some troubles too recently. Let's see. Pirates having some troubles. Uh, the Warriors got knocked out of the playoff or the play in. The Lakers won. Mixed feelings. Mixed feelings. Not even going to lie to you, deep. Mixed feelings. All right. So, yeah, man. Yeah, you just, had a whole plan set. Like, up, like I said, very mixed feelings. It's like in the moment, you're like, all right, yeah, we won. Like, let's get it. Beat our chest. Come on, man. Bring the, bring the nuggets in, bro. We're going to see what we're going to see if the king bleed this year. What's happening, bro? Y'all y'all think y'all got the title. Y'all think y'all like that. We'll find out y'all bleed this year. You feel me? So it's like, that's the energy. But at the same time, it's like, we knew in 300, it's like, bro, why y'all got to go there? Y'all know what this is. Can y'all do it? Yes. Does everything have to go right? Yes. Can everything go right? Yes. But all it takes is one thing to go wrong, and now it's completely, ah, 300. You seen how it ended? Wasn't nice. We had to get to part two to feel good. Well, it still could go right for the Lakers, and it mm -hmm. might still mean the wrong result just because yeah. of how good the Nuggets are. Yeah. So that's why I'm just kind of like back and forth. But at the same time, you know, we ain't going to duck the smoke now that it's here. You can't run away from it now. Now you got to lean into it, Deke. You know how we do so. My man put that, man, he got the crown on his head. He ready for action. So we're going to find out. That's what we're going to do, D. We're going to find out. So I'm interested about it, man. But yeah, man, Warriors got knocked out, bro. It was rough. Why she went to bed on this? She was like, I ain't staying up no more. <laughs> Clay went over. Yeah, they said he's washed now, bro. He, uh, he's he, been he, washed. he was doing conditioning last night. 31 minutes, zero points. It's just like, yo, what you doing? You did, you, you shot 10 times, missed every shot, every three, every field goal. Like, what was you doing? He was just, just running that. Just get some conditioning in, bro. Yeah, he's been washed. Steve Kerr says yeah. the Warriors want him back. Yeah. Which but is you got to say cool. that, though, right? Yeah, you, you do. Say that. <laughs> and if Clay's willing to take the hometown discount, mm -hmm. veteran discount, yeah. sure, why not? He could still be an asset, but. Yeah. For traditional Clay Thompson type of money or what NBA superstar? Very true. Very true. Like the tip of going right for an NBA superstar. It's, yeah. yeah, it's not worth it yeah, at all. He, he was just exercising, bro. But at the same time, I'm like, if you can take a, a way better deal, you can exercise and hopefully don't go 0 for 10 and we can work with you. Like yeah. you could be a you part of a be, rotation uh, here. Yeah, right, right. Like yeah. Ray Allen at the end right. of his career. Be a part of a rotation, but you can't get paid with these used to get paid. That ain't we and honestly, can't do that, bro. Yeah. That's how it should happen. Mm -hmm. I don't think Clay should go to any other team. He's Warriors for life. I would agree. Draymond, Steph. Yeah. You guys are Warriors for life. Just stay there. I do think it's harder, though, for those guys to stay at the same place that they were superstars at and fall to a smaller role of being rotational. That would have been like if we would watch Dwayne Wade go from being D-Wade to now you're coming off the bench, D-Wade. Like, it's almost weird seeing CP3 come off the bench. But because he's kind of bounced around now a couple of teams, we kind of, like, let it slide. But imagine if this was five, you know, five years ago or a couple years ago and then CP3 at one team the whole time we didn't see. If he was with the Clippers this whole journey, and now, hey, go ahead, come off the bench so you can stay here the whole time. It just, I think for Clay that would be tough. Draymond, that would be tough. And for Steph, that would be tough. I think it could be easiest for Clay just because of who he's been his whole career. I mean, that's just like a spot up suitor. I think yeah. that would age oh, his the style best. Age is perfect. Yeah. yeah. Like, just I still like you think said with Ray, he could be a 10, 11, 12 point player, the, like, and have a significant Cal role. Where, yeah. Steph think, Curry, it's either you're Steph Curry or you're not. Yeah. Right. Draymond. Yeah. It's kind of the same thing this with him. Although he could be, he could always be the garbage man. Draymond's game can age, Draymond's act antics can't age. That's yeah, the problem with absolutely. Draymond. He would have to give up some of the antics because that's 
partly why he's viewed how he's viewed even more so now. It's like, yo, your answers are getting louder and louder, but your production hasn't shifted. You're still the utility ultra dope, but still garbage, man. You're the high end Dennis Rodman. Like, that's kind of the comp. So I think for him, that still works. Steph, it's more of the LeBron convo, it's the Kobe convo, it's the T Mac convo. How do you go from being a mega star yeah. to a role player? Jordan did it with the Wizards at one point, and we all were kind of just like, this is uncomfortable. Like, this doesn't feel right. And I think for Steph, it would be that combo. If that's ultimately what he allowed himself to get to. Same with Braun. Could any of them dudes at the back end? Kobe. At the back end, could Kobe have went into a road where he's coming off the bench, playing X amount of minutes, these your shots? Yeah. But would Kobe want to see that? Would he want to do that? Would we want to see Kobe in that role? And that's kind of how I view the Steph thing. And even Clay, if he stays in a... Out in Golden State, but then, yeah, I don't I like, see that I like happening Steph with Steph. He's yeah. aging like fine wine. Hey, look, Steph, LeBron come, has too. Steph, come on, to come on to L.A., man. Look, Steph, you come to L.A. We'll send the first up there. We'll draft Bronny in the second, and then after that, we'll get it how we live. That ain't happening. Why not? Nah, he's Warriors for life. I know, but why not? Can't hurt to ask. All they can say is no. I make them say no. Yeah, you can ask. Yeah, just just ask. Cause what if they say yeah? They ain't. Well, they say, oh, you give us this first and another first. All right, cool. Eh. There's no shot now. I know, I, but it's wishful thinking. Steph's still like a top 10 player, top and, five player. And they don't care about them NBA draft picks the way that we care about NFL draft picks, too. Think about NFL draft pick, man. You can sell two first rounders. You get you like a star, like a mega star. Three first rounders, but you can whoever you want. Who are we? Who would say no to four first rounders? We said even the Chiefs would give up Mahomes for four or five first rounders. You'd be like, you know what? All right, we ain't tripping. That'd be the most I don't difficult. Think they would. You're right. That's probably the most difficult question, yeah. though. Them, but that's the one outlier of a player. But in the NBA, I'm like, I don't, I don't think they view them draft picks the same way. Nah. Yeah, just because if you're a good team and you're doing these trades, typically you're not going to have as high of a first round. Pick. Nope, and that's definitely the case. That's how the Brooklyn Nets trade back with like KG and Paul Pierce. That's mm-hmm. how it backfired on them. Yeah. They, they were like, screw these picks. We're going to yeah. be picking in the 20s and 30s anyway uh-huh. just because we're going to have Pierce and KG. We're going to be competitive. Mm-hmm. But that became uh, very disastrous real yeah. quick. Absolutely. Bro. And the Celtics got Jalen Brown and Jason Changed Tatum everything. because of it. <laughs> Changed everything, bro. Right, right. Yeah, that's. I think that's why they don't value them as much. But that. yeah, if... Things turn, and, and that's what can happen sometimes, like that Brooklyn ha- Nets Celtics ha- yeah. trade, almost even like the Houston trade mm-hmm. with James Harden and stuff. Like, you think the team that's getting the better player in the deal or like the superstar in the deal, oh, well, you know, we'll be good for yeah. four or five years because mm-hmm. there's all these fir- future first round yeah. picks that are like four or five years down the line. Oh, we won't have to worry about yeah. them. But then, you know, if your team's not as good as they were well, within like a year or two. Or they, they ship that superstar out yeah, in a year yeah, or two because exactly. we've the seen that too, bro. Yeah. And you got to trade him. And they talk about You're basically in tank mode, but all you're doing uh-huh. is helping out the team that you traded with yep. with uh, that pick that you gave <laughs> Facts. up. Facts. Facts. So maybe they should be a little bit more careful with their picks. No. So uh, it's going to be interesting, man. It's going to be interesting. But, but shout out to the play though. Shout but out to I guess the, it's been working out for the yeah. Clippers somewhat. They traded a ton of those picks for Paul George. It is now. Yeah. The only problem with that is, is of course, those mm-hmm. two have gotten hurt. Every year. Yeah. But they've made little runs in Western Conference. They've been relevant. But now you're seeing it's the a benefits. Lot of, it's a lot of other teams taking out there place now, with man. OKC getting yeah. all those picks. Uh-huh. But it's just, man. That's the hoop season right now, bro. I'm loving it. But like I said, shout out to the play-in tournament, man, because it has made it a lot or even more exciting leading up into the NBA playoffs that, like, actual, like, regular round one. Because now it was like, like I said, man, we got the playoffs, little play-in last night, little one-game one, one game tournament type thing. And now for them dudes, you know, we got another game this Friday. So it's like, you know, it's pretty cool to see some of this action like this, man. So, yeah, man, shout out to them dudes, man. But um, I'm trying to think. You got any deep thoughts on you? No, it was just the Penguins missed the playoffs. Respect, respect. And the Pirates are struggling. All right, all right. Well, There's I... controversy about our pitcher, or our young stud pitcher yesterday. Oh, what happened? We're limiting his innings. So he was on a heater. Huh. I think he had like seven or eight strikeouts yesterday, only let up one hit. Pirates are up in the game, and then we pull him after five, end up losing. Yeah, they tripping. But what they, what's the thought process? They trying to preserve him? Yeah, yeah, essentially. 
you like that move. Is that smart? And this is just a part of I would need to the talk negative. to my baseball insider. Okay, I'm about to say, I don't know say. enough. To I don't have like a if, strong take yeah. on it. I'm like, is this the equivalent of if we were pulling JPJ at the two quarters? Like, hey, bro, you done played enough, but we want you to have a long career. And we're like, nah, you don't have to do that at that position. That's not this. You you could play the whole time. Now, with Jones, I don't even think it's necessarily just about long career right now. I think it's for him to be pitching for us late into the season even. Because I saw a quote. It was like, it's either I pitch all my innings now or I'm sitting out. What? Yeah. Is that normal? I don't know if that's normal. Yeah. Like, if he pitches, if if they would have taken him 8-9-8, eight, eight, or they just... Give him all the innings possible. So for, they literally have him on like a pitch count for the season is what it yeah, sounds like. Yeah, that's what like it sounds like. you can't throw over a thousand yeah. pitches or yeah, yeah, however either, many pitches. Yeah. It's either I get taken out now or I'll get taken out for like yeah. a full month or two at the yeah, end of the year. Yeah, at the season. end of the year. That's what it definitely sounds like. That's what he said. I don't know yeah. if he's on board with it. It seems like he is. I don't think he's complaining about it. Low-key, that sounds like some like, I don't want to say like overly analytical, but I know for us with football, we would have – a thing where we would talk about like a rest it was like at the end of the season based on how many snaps you would play would be predicated on how much rest that you would like man it's like you can't do anything during this time frame to heal up maybe it's something like that where they're just like yo if you throw x amount of pitches we know it's going to take this much time for you to get your body right or to keep you preserved so we're going to keep your number here and yeah, try to figure it out over the course of i guess you know a full baseball season yeah i don't have a strong opinion on it i'll yeah. have to Get more respect. information, gather more information on it. Respect, respect. I like it. Shoot, man, I was going to say... um, It's just a weird spot we're in yeah. that the Pirates have expectations and, you know, we have some high hopes for this season right now. And that's a good place to be in. But, yeah, what I was um, saying was this, though, man. I don't have a deep thought. I don't have a most thought. But I did want to shout out 757 legend, Alan Iverson. Got him a little statue situation. Yeah, man, I ain't never had no statue of myself, man. So seeing the cat from the San Fire get a statue up in Philadelphia, man. Oh yeah, I thought that was pretty dope, man. So shout out to AI, man, cause you know that's that's one of that's one of my guys that I looked up to as a little guy, man. You know, you be like, yo, he's from my area, that guy's from here. He could do this, he could make it there. Just gotta give you hope, you know. So salute AI, man. Shout out to Allen Ives and shout out to the Sixers, man, for like I said, putting up the statue for the homie, man. So definitely they have a like Doctor J one. Yes, they okay. do. That's, I forget they had. It's like multiple, like big time players that have played, you know, in Philly. But yeah, I, it's, I think I think maybe six of them I seen. I think, oh, they I need to count them again. I think yeah, because they're like smaller ones, but they're uh, like in line, like next to each other. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I was like, all right, all right. Yeah, I was just wondering if Iverson was the first, but yeah. if they had one, nah, if there was yeah, one yeah, guy to had, get one in the past, it would be Doctor J. Jay. Yeah, Heck yeah, gotta be Doc. Yeah. Nah, but they, it was multiple dudes over there. I'd have to go back and look to see, like, who everybody was. But, yeah, man, I was like, all right, man, shout out to my dog, man. I was down from the crib. Yeah, seven, five, him. seven, man. So let's get the it. Answer. Let's get it. Yes, he was the question. Right here's the question. It's a young AI, but no, he's the answer, baby. So with that being the case, man. Me and my buddies back oh, in grade school when we played hoops, we, I mean, we used to wear the AI sleeves. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. Bro, we the one time we did it, perfected uh, the crossover, bro. First game of the season. Now we were outmatched. I don't think my dad oh, told no. us this. My oh, dad was no. coach. We were outmatched. Oh, we no. were <laughs> we were mainly like seventh grade team, and we went up against eighth graders. Hey, y'all it was like this swaggy, tournament. Swaggy. It was this tournament. He got us in. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We were fifth graders. I think that's what it was. Yeah, going up against sixth graders. Yeah. So he got us into this like preseason tournament. And I don't think he really told us like who we were going up against or yeah. anything. And we're wearing these sleeves, man. We're oh, wearing these man. AI sleeves Y'all and everything. Fire walking in the building. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, we got house. Oh yes. We got yes. house. Yes. My dad sent out a memo to all the parents on the team. Like we, we're not we're not wearing any of this gear anymore. Like no done. No oh, no more flash. This is your fault. We're, we're gonna let our game do the talk. I, I blame you guys for this. <laughs> That's wild. That yeah. is wild. But I, yeah, I always, I was rocking AI shoes back in the day. Uh, hey, I had a movement, bro. We, we tried wearing the sleeves for uh, that movement, season, bro. but yeah, it only lasted one game. Yeah, because our, our play wasn't backing up. The, no, the no, sleeve, I wish you were there, bro. Sleeve, it, it wasn't sleeve worthy. Yeah, yeah, you, you can't be overly swaggy if your game isn't overly productive. That's yeah, that's just how it goes, bro. <laughs> you can't be the guy. We like you create a play. You got everything off the mannequin, but you ain't getting no buckets. You ain't getting no stops. Nothing. No, 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 no. Put that off, bro. Put that over there. 
I remember I had long hair too going into that game. Shaved you it off like I was in the military. Swaggy. Oh yeah. my god. <laughs> yeah. I had to shave it off. Oh man. Shout out to your pops too. Shout out to your pops. Pops say, yo, I ain't going for none of this. Y'all didn't embarrass me. Y'all showed up out here like y'all some hot shots. Absolutely not. <laughs> That's that dad energy, right? That's for certain dad energy. Yeah, no, I don't want to see another sleeve out here. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's real. That's real. Shout out. Shout I think out. He said man. everything. Like no arm. I'm trying to tell no you, bro. Wristband, like nothing. I'm trying to tell you. I've <laughs> had a coach that do that, bro. Yeah, you show up and everybody decked out, and you get what? Oh man, take all that off. This the track. This the bag right here. Put it in the bag. If I see it out here again, it's done. I'm like, dang, coach. It was like that. Like I don't want to see that. He's like, all right. I'm sorry. Mikey yeah. says Deke was trying to be White Iverson. Oh. <laughs> With the hair, bro, you say I cut the hair off. Psst. Yep, yeah, it was, it was like I was in the military bro. for the next game. Yeah, bro, that's buzz crazy. cut, shaved off. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I wish I could have saw this the sleeve though. Bro. Oh, we got house. Oh like it was bad, bad. It was. Really said, bad. I put it with the but sleeve, we were like I said, bro, we were outmatched. Great. We were going yeah. up against a team like a grade ahead of us, but yeah. still, it, it trust me, it should have been way more competitive than what it was at least. <laughs> It was terrible. Yeah, shout it's out to the pops, bro. Shout out to your pops. I ain't right, going for this, man. We're going to set a lesson today. We're going to learn from this. Yeah. Richard Hunt says, sounds like Deke was the OG Kenny Pickett. Ooh. 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 Yeah. Did you wear number eight? Because they, they handed out that eight now, I see. No, nah, I rocked five. Oh, five was my okay. number. Okay. Because, yeah, that eight, they didn't say, we ain't tripping. If y'all got some tape, just tape your day plate and it's going to make right. Yeah. It's got T at the end of it, so you're kind of good. I'm not surprised. Whenever I saw the jersey graphic, I actually thought we signed Anthony Wright for a minute. I completely Ooh. forgot we signed Matthew Wright. Yeah. I was like, oh, did we add another dude to the quarterback room? Nah, respect. It, the timing was weird because I totally forgot that Matthew Wright hadn't had a number yet. So when it said Wright at eight, I was like, who the heck is Wright? I was like, oh, did I miss something? And I was like, oh, no. We've been, okay, this is, ah, oh, got you now. Mm-hmm. But you, Most likely, eight will be available again when the season actually starts. Yo, you got to chill, D. Why you doing them like that, D? You know I like Matthew Wright. <laughs> D said, don't y'all worry, though, all right? If anybody wants to switch to eight, just just wait a couple of months, all right? And you can get the number. I promise. This is crazy. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> yeah, this would be like the AB84 uh -huh. Rico Bussy scenario. Yeah, yeah. Get it while it's hot. Get it while it's hot, man. <laughs> all right. Nobody settled it on it just yet. You got time. Mm -hmm. Tom Jade saying nobody wants eight. I mean, eight is a unique number, but you can make it fire at the right position. But it is it's, it's eight. It's a quarterback number yeah, for sure. That's what I'm saying. Like I think of like number eight at quarterback. Yeah, it's a quarterback. Yeah, it's number. definitely Tommy Gunn. Yeah, he was the OG eight at least in my mm -hmm. lifetime. See, you know I'm a cowboy cat. I think of eight. Yeah. yeah. So it's like yeah, that eight was just like yep, yeah, that's just the quarterback. Yeah. Yeah, I can't really see a receiver rocking eight. Melvin Ingram tried. Yeah. It actually was. Yeah, I thought I thought it looked cool in the eight. You know the one I could see in an eight if Patrick Queen was in eight. Right. I could see that. Just add another loop mm -hmm. to the six. Yeah. But eight, I don't know. Rod Dollar says Darnell Washington in number eight could be fire. Oh yeah, I like that. And because he's tall enough, his jersey is going to actually show the double circle. So it's going. I think it'll be fire. Block number version would be even harder, though, with that. Yeah. I think that'd be tough. Well, he should have just been zero coming out. That, too. Because that was his number at Georgia. Yeah. But block number is kind of like best of both worlds. It's like the cheat code to it. Yeah. Because he's tall. Yeah. yeah I, I'm with you on that, though. Uh, yeah, I could see that. I could see a running back. Maybe it's just because then mm, Josh Jacobs were last you're year. You're right, yeah. <laughs> All right. Maybe okay. my mind's open to a running back. Okay, number eight, okay. Huh? Cordo Patterson, he did not go eight. He went with eight four. That's right. Just, yeah, why didn't you go with that number, Cordell? You tripping. Nah, Jalen's 30. Don't switch the eight. Najee, you're 2-2. Two, two. So we're set. Yeah, so Jalen, he, he got about another year before he's going to have to make a decision. If you 30, just stick with 30 because after this year, it's going to be too hot. When you switch your number after you done, you know made too many plays, you got to start cutting the check to switch the jersey out. Yeah. He's got to stick with 30. Yeah. Wasn't he 30 at Oklahoma State? Uh, I th you're right. I think he was. That might be his number. Yeah, I think he just Maybe that was his number, it. man. I think 30 is a good one. Nah. He doesn't have to compete with anyone here. Mm. I, was about to say, I don't know any 30s. I can't think of I any. I could be off, but I don't know any 30s. Yeah, I can't think of any. Yeah. Chad Scott might have been 30. Shout out to Chad Scott. I think. But he was okay. No. 
He didn't live up. He was he was first round pick, mm-hmm. corner. Like, he was solid, but he just ain't here, boy. Young. No, no, he, he was a little bit before my time, but from what I remember, he, he wasn't what he was supposed to be. Mm-hmm. That's all. Like he was he was a starter. Yeah. But yeah. there's a reason we moved on from him eventually. All right, what are we doing? Scotty B said, get Justin Simmons that number eight. I'm all Ooh, for it, but we got to make cool. the number work, man. They said that, you know, he don't like what we offer. And then we oh, ain't really? offering. We ain't, yeah, they say he don't like what we offer. What's this new report? I'm just, that's what I've, that's, it's nothing recently. This was just the last time we saw the report. Okay. That was the combo, yeah. He was wasn't like the number. ESPN report? No, I thought, I thought that was Kabali. I could be off, though. Thought I, saw, I thought I saw Kabali with one of them oh, like okay. that. Yeah, that's why I thought it was. But I could be Might off, though. Been. But I know that that was one of the things. It was like, oh, the number. I was like, all right. I ain't tripping on the number. Well, you see, I mean, I'm tripping Dulac on the number. said today that the Steelers have actually tried to trade for Ayuk. Mm-hmm. It just can't come it's to agreement number. at this point. It's yeah. the number, man. But they yeah, that's, that's, that's So it's what, multiple reports now. Because you said that uh, Lock and Four was saying that something was supposed to be big, trying to make it happen. Do like I said that you know he didn't hurt it. He's they trying to make it happen. That's what that's what, what that's that's what they floating out there, bro. They trying to make a deal happen, bro. Something big is supposed to be happening. That's yeah, what they trying to make it seem like, bro. Back to what we mm-hmm. said on Monday, or I said on Monday. I think where there's smoke, there is fire, but mm-hmm. there's a ton of conflicting reports out there on both Ayuk and Higgins on what's going on. What's Some of that's been, not even exactly pertaining to the Steelers. Yeah, I, th- just, I think the Steelers do have interest, but there's that stuff where. Uh, being reported out there that Ayuk has requested the trade, but then, and then the Niners said are like, he didn't request yeah. the trade. At one point, I saw the Niners say that they weren't trying to move him, but then at the same time, it's still clearly some tension there because Ayuk did the whole scrub the social media thing. So we're like, all right, you stop following him. So what's going on? Like maybe he didn't officially request the trade, but you did all the unofficial stuff. Yeah, yeah he's. Very open to being traded. <laughs> he went from a committed relationship to an open relationship. That's what he's in right now with the Niners. And we're just trying to see what's up. But he's not the only receiver that's in an open relationship right now. We're going to talk about him, you know, because it's OTA season. And you get information during OTA season that I like. Oh, you got a new name. We're going to talk. We'll talk. Yeah, we'll talk. Because we're supposed to be starting. I ain't even started this yet, man. You ready to start, bro? Report. Nah, man. Don't play. Don't do me like that. Don't put me in the driving Competing seat. Competing with AB. Listen, I am not. Never. I'm team support my guys. So if that's his lane, hey, man, big up to you. Just, yeah, just be a little, you know, less uh, confrontational at times. But that is what his market is right now. So I can understand it, okay? But just keep it on the gram. We ain't got no issues. Stay on the net. Stay on the net. But, uh, yeah, nothing over here, man. So with that being the case, let's go ahead and start the show like how we always do because Lil Man has a baseball game tonight, and you know Pop's got to beat it. It's his first one tonight, D. All right? He's playing for the Angels again, but he switched the number up. Now he in that 10, D. That 10 on What was the number last year? He was in the 6 like LeBron. You know he went from 23 to a 6. You know how that go. Yeah, man. Upgrade or downgrade then? No. So 10 upgrade for personal reasons. Her, uh, My wife's brother. Obviously, shout out to my bro. He's a hooper. Well, he hooped in college, stuff like that. Obviously, now he's retired. Does the whole coaching thing, right? But his college number... Was ne- uh ten high school number was number ten, so we kind of get that vibe, you know what I mean? So it's a cool family dynamic, like yo, bro, okay. we got you. you know what I'm saying she ain't he ain't get number da 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 da. And my side of the family is football, basketball, wrestling, track, soccer. They side do all the hooping and the baseball stuff. So with baseball, it's like yo, man, this is cool. You got your brother and, and pops, you know, pops pass, but it's like you know, this kind of the variation he because he got the glove that pops, you know father-in-law had got him before uh, he passed okay. away so it was like oh it's coming together so it's fire but i definitely came sounds like the, a season of destiny coming up you, you see what it sound like bro you see what it sound like bro you see I, i've been taking them out to the little batting cage deke i never went to a batting cage in my life i'm in this <laughs> joint in the batting cages i'm like oh this is crazy <laughs> I'm over here learning baseball lingo. I'm like, oh, so you can change the speed, the curve. It's, I don't know. All right, I'm learning. I'm learning. They talk about oil and gloves was up. The machine it? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. They got oil in for the gloves, all this type of stuff, bro. Yeah, I have zero clue. Because you could get in the cage and pitch. Yeah, <laughs> I, I've, I've done that too until he hit the ball back. And I'm like, whoa, bro, you're tripping. Like, that's dangerous, <laughs> all right? So, yeah, it's, it's like I said, I'm working progress on this baseball dad stuff. When they get back to football season, we're in our pocket. All right, I'm back in the pocket. I feel good. This baseball dad, ah, YouTube has been saving the boy. All right, shout out to YouTube and, and Mike Trout. All right, 
because yeah i just watch him all the time but uh with that being the case man let's start the show like how we always do go ahead and drop it in the comment section where you are tuning in from and that way we'll give you the big boy shout outs to start today's show and of course if you're digging the show today, hit that like button one time for the coach. And if you're new to the channel, please don't forget to subscribe. All right. So let's get it. Let's get it. Lil B says Warren was seven in college. Seven. At which part though? Because he did two schools, right? Three. You're right. He had. He's a JUCO. He went to was Snow, it Snow college, college, Utah, Utah State. State, and then, uh, and then, oh my goodness, John Blake on the final school for my man, uh, Oklahoma State. Yeah. He was seven. Yeah, I'm also seeing he was 31. Where was that at? Utah State? Or no, that's not him. No, it's seven. Yeah, hmm. seven at Oklahoma State. All right. Well, good thing he doesn't want seven in the press. Oh, <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He can get the Pat P treatment. I'm sorry. If that's the case. I'm sorry. My, my, my we'll apologies. <laughs> my apologies. I totally forgot. You go play for the Browns. Or something. Uh, Y'all about to make it personal for Deke. Don't do that today. It's, it's all good. It's all good. We're going to get back but to the shout Jalen Warren is yeah. a guy that respects Steelers tradition. Yes. So, again, for, we don't have to worry about he's that. He's a friend of the family. Yeah. He's a friend of the family. Yeah. He's a friend of ours. That's how they said him. He's a friend of ours. David Decker, the 585 Rochester, New York. Moats and Deke. What is up? Go Steelers. Moats, watch my Thunders win it all after the media and everyone said early exit in the playoffs also ready for the draft next week wow so look y'all gonna get out that first round because y'all gonna play them like the bean boys okay because zion is out he got the hammy so he's done shout out to him that he was cooking but yeah man y'all gonna beat them like the bean boys so y'all get out the first round but y'all ain't making no real noise over there but i do like sga man like i said he's the mvp shout out to sga man respect and chet holmgren too man I like Chet now that he didn't recover from Brian Brown stomping on him. I, I, I appreciate him, man. Shout out to Chet. I like Chet. You know Chet, right? The big, big tall. Yeah, he's supposed to be like a, they was called him like a young KD since they go in high school, man. Yeah. But Chet finally getting back out there, getting some buckets, man. Yeah, I know about him. He had a good season. And I'm a little disappointed in myself for not trusting my gut because yeah. back like, it was probably three months ago, I looked at the rookie of the year odds. And I saw that Wembenyama was in the pluses. It was something like plus so 200 took, or plus you 300. You took Wemby. No, I asked my buddy, who's good at this gambling stuff, supposedly. I mm -hmm. said, all right, what's the deal with the NBA? I haven't been paying attention. But, like, why is Chet favored? I'm looking at yeah. the stats, and Wembenyama's stats are actually better. I don't think he's as efficient as Chet. Mm -hmm. But, like, what's going on with this rookie of the year? Because I might take this Wemby bet. He's like, no, it's going to be mm -hmm. Chet. Fast forward. It's, it's Chet. I mean, it's yeah. clearly going to be Wemby. Oh. Yeah, I think it's... So think you it's, went with Chet No, then. I didn't bet it at all. Oh, okay. I, I would have bet saying. Wemby because of the odds. He Got you. And your friend something. told you don't because yeah. to stick with Chet. Chet was hoop. Chet nice, bro. But I guess it's Wemby, though. So they went with From what I've seen, I okay. think it's Wemby. Yeah. Fair enough. So I'm disappointed in myself. But they haven't officially announced it just yet. So we shall see. I think he's going to win. He, he has he, a ton been, of hype. He, he finished has a ton the season of hype really, really too, strong. He does. Chet played all 82, though. We'll see. It's, I feel like it's going to be win because of the storyline, too. You can't not do that. Yeah, I just thought, you know, the sit -down he's, only, yeah. he's only a couple months into this season. Yeah. I don't think Wem Bignana's numbers are going to go down. Mm -hmm. They're only going to go up. He's going to get better and better. And I think he's going to eclipse yeah. Chet just, just raw numbers-wise. I guess Respect. Chet's going to be on the better team and everything. But, yeah. again, too, like you said, better storyline. Yes, yeah, way better storyline, bro. I think he's gonna win rookie of the year. Flat yeah. out. I should have trusted my gut. I yeah. should have just won Respect. with it. See, I feel like if Chet was out, if Chet would have played last year, Chet gets that. I think he gets the storyline. I think he gets the, the rookie of the year and it's all good. I think this year, as much as I would love for Chet to get a rookie of the year, I think they go hit him with it. Yo, bro, you 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 kinda already, you know, had a chance to sit. It was like the uh who they was hollering about? Uh your boy Ben Simmons when he was uh going up for the rookie of the year. And it was after he set that first year. And it's like, is this actually like the rookie, even though you've had a full year of, you know, being a professional, but granted you weren't playing. And that's kind of the, you know, that's kind of the conversation around him. I think Michael Porter Jr. was another one like that. And obviously Chet, that's his scenario too right now. So, yeah. Spice Creations, 832, Houston, Texas. Shout out to Houston, Texas. What up, Spice Creations? Let's get it. And you stay in the building with us too. We appreciate you from the heart. 
Lord Trash Can from Germany, Berlin. Shout out the Lord Trash Can. I guess can. it would be Berlin, Germany. In Berlin, Germany. Shout out. But yes. maybe that's how Europeans say their cities be. and states or cities and countries. Very true. It definitely could be they the case. They say the man. country first and then the city. Salute them. Salute them then, man. Salute them. It could definitely be the case. Man. Whereas America, we do, you know, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Yeah. I'm with you on that. Shoot, man. I was about to say, bro, I didn't realize we 35. I'm up at 40 minutes in. Dang, we didn't get the shout outs like that. I'm I'll sure. say a couple more. Right, we get a couple more, then we get to these supers, man. No yeah. M from the 613, Ottawa, Canada. Hashtag draft Rome Adunze. Rome. And like Brandon Griffin. We like him. From the 864 Greenville, South Carolina. And the last one I'll say is Susie from 712. Shout out to Susie. The Sweet Center, Iowa. Let's go. Been a minute, but happy to be in the chat. Nah, salute you, Susie. We glad to have you back in the building with us on a live. And shout out to Iowa, more importantly, Caitlin Clark, number one overall pick in the WNBA. Going out to Indiana to the Fever. You get an Indiana Fever jersey? No. No? All right, just check it. They, you, they got him in red, bro. Gear. All right. Respect, respect. That is on brand with you. That's on brand. I thought about it. I thought about it. Oh, uh, yeah? Just because, you know, I support everybody. So I got far. the WNBA hoodies. I got the WNBA hoodies. You don't have a WNBA jersey yet? Uh, I think I still got the Bria joint. Bria Hartley. Remember oh, okay. she came on the show? I yeah, yeah. But I say, yeah, so I think I still, I want to say I have her, but she don't play for the squad anymore. That's the only problem. So it's like a throwback She's situation. retired. Well, she's international right now. Okay. You know? She did the whole, you know, coming back from injury stuff like that. So, yeah. so it's like, I got the jersey and I got some shirts, but yeah. It's like, my, you know, Mike Barnes said, I'm going to go cut me one, man. Yeah. yeah. Worst case, I'm going to cop a Paige next year. When Paige Buke has come out for certain, I'm going to cop that one. Yeah. So it's like, I got some options. Okay. So she'll be the yeah. next Caitlin Clark for college. In 2024, I just don't like when you say the next because anybody that knows is like, yo, she's already been. Oh, the, that. Yeah, I, that's I the remember first, you said yeah, that. That's the first one. But yeah, I, I, I guess I'm saying at least in terms of like just hype and hype and notoriety. It's just she was hurt. She's already had like the hype and notoriety. Her freshman year when she came in, did all that stuff. She just got hurt, got hurt, and this was the first year back of like a full season. So that's why I was like quiet. But she quietly put up buckets, which is why she was on all the mother teams that Caitlin was on. You're like, oh, all American, Caitlin, Paige. Oh, this is Caitlin, Paige. Because so, yeah. I mean, someone's gonna have to take the torch, oh, yeah. right? Oh yeah, but that's what I'm For saying. Just it's like hype and marketing. She goes, and all that yeah, stuff. she'll definitely have that. But it's not her being the next. It's her getting back what was already hers. Is what I'm saying. That's the part where I was kind of like, yo, you kind of threw me off. Where you were like, yo, man, she be. I'm like, well, whoa, I guess the thing that makes whoa. Clark intriguing. Is her style of play? Yes, very Just true. Chucking up threes, mm-hmm. from, like Steph Curry type of stuff. Yeah. I don't know what. Yeah, uh, she plays at UConn. Yes, mm-hmm. I don't know what her game's like. Bro, is it as exciting as Kevin Clark? Absolutely, Clark's? she's the full package though. Think of instead of it just being stuff. Think of almost to the extent of like how Kyrie can cross you up. He could take you to the cup. He could mid range you to death. He could shoot you from three. She also got Sasha back you down. Complete. That's what we said. That's why it was never a question between the two. It's just she been hurt. So in that time of her being hurt, Caitlyn just been cooking. So everybody's like, oh, Caitlyn, Caitlyn, Caitlyn. But it's like, bro, if you know Paige, you're like, nah, bro. She just been hurt. Don't get it twisted. She just been hurt. That's it, man. Yeah. When they were both healthy, bro, all them teams, all them Olympic teams they was on, Caitlyn was deferred to Paige. Yeah, yeah, don't, yeah, don't get it twisted, baby. She just been hurt. But she back now, baby. We got a full season. That's why I'm hype. I'm like, yo, come on, man. Come on, Paige. But Caitlin fire. Caitlin's in her bag right now, man. AJ Martinez, gifted a month's membership to Big Mabe. Shout out to AJ Martinez, Rockstar Life, and Big Mabe. Welcome to the upper room. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Steeler Nation on fire. Deke, what's going on with Pitt? There are a lot of players in the transfer portal. Yeah, football, mm. it's not looking good right now. But Y'all Hoops struggle is bus? getting some reinforcements. Okay, okay, We're okay. really good in Hoops. Okay. We got some uh, good replacements for Bub Carrington leaving and Shout out. Blake Henson. Uh, going yes, they got the too. Twins too, though. Twins still there. No, we got some good guys that yeah. came in. Uh, yeah, pit football, it's kind of in shambles right now. We're losing some hometown guys, too. Like That's mm. that's when you know it's bad. Yeah. It's like that sometimes, bro. But y'all be back. I just feel like part of it's the state of college football, though, too. Yeah. Like, how much can you blame Pitt necessarily? It's just, it is what it is. If they're uh, getting paid more somewhere else. You know, I'm not going to complain. You know what, what JB with, though. We over here, like, okay, we, we, hey, import export business, man. I get it now. Import export. 
Yeah, I'm not thrilled about it. The one dude I'm not mad about leaving. It's the uh, the quarterback that. Which quarterback was it? Was it number two? Was it number three? Who's, oh, I was who's about to say because yeah, you you didn't had a couple. It was Veyer. He was the oh. second guy that came in. It was the guy that replaced Jerkovich. <laughs> he had a strong start. We beat Louisville. I think Louisville was like top uh-huh. fifteen at the time. Big upset. I was at the game, and then I think he lost the next like four or five straight. And then there was that debacle though down in Wake Forest. I remember the slide. the slide. Yep. But he was never really able to recover from that. So I, I wasn't opposed him, to him entering the transfer portal. He doesn't really have a spot here no. because we're either going to roll with Yarnell, the third mm. quarterback that we that you like? went with yeah. last year, who was steady hand. Mm-hmm. It was, you know, the question was almost like Mason with us. Like, why wasn't this dude starting the whole year? Yeah. I think we could have won more games. He's steady hand. I think he's got some potential too, but he's not like turning the ball over, or doing anything crazy. And then uh, we got that guy from Alabama. I think it's going to be between those two. So I'm not stressing about Bayer hitting the transfer portal. But we are losing some starters on defense. Bringing in a dude from Bama, though, man. It's got to feel good. It's got to feel great. Five star. I never had a a dude from Bama transferring. We've had him in the NFL, but never in college. I was like, I don't know what that would be like. Seriously, bro. He might end up being better than what they got down there. It's just he was buried on the depth chart. You know how that goes, right? 100%, bro. Especially at schools like that. All it takes is an opportunity. Yeah, pit football, though. Uh, tough. Tough. You know what? I saw... Uh, oh, man. I'm trying to remember what exactly. It was something on Twitter. I don't know how legit it was, but it was a great idea about uh, just a power conference for college football where okay. it's like 70 teams, uh-huh. and then they divvy up those 70 teams. By the regions like, and stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. like eight, eight or nine little conferences. Did you see it? Uh-huh. I, I thought it was it. brilliant. Yeah. JMU was in it. Uh-huh. I know, that's that's I know exactly what you're talking about. Pitt. I don't think that the NCAA is going for it, and they would have to like separate from the NCAA in this like model for it to work. Me, I, I don't is that what it is? That's yeah. I think that's the hiccup with it. Like all it, those teams would have to essentially still work together under one governing body, and then equally decide that yeah, this is how we want to split it up. I think it could work. It'd be amazing. Yeah, but in theory, that's almost like the equivalent of us switching our like USA government. Like, because this, the NCAA, in terms of how they've run college athletics, not just football, all of collegiate athletics, it's been this way for so long that even with just these past couple of years of NIL, <clears throat> right, or even the transfer portal being altered, the way that it's altered has kind of put a shockwave in all of this. But then you throw in the TV deals, that money, and when individual schools like Texas, like the SEC schools, right, they can get to the point where they don't need a conference. They don't need anybody else. It's just hard to have everybody playing ball. Because if I'm a big fish like that, why do I need to worry about what that team over there is going to be needing or what they're going to be needing over there? And that's the whole you know argument that you run into with the NCAA at times with Title IX, where it's like you got to divvy up this because you got to help them. And they're like, oh, we don't want to do that. If we can generate this, why can't we keep all of this? So I just think that you kind of might you'll run into that essentially. But – if they're willing to make that change, I think it would be great. Yeah, the, I think it would be so great, the man. Two things, uh, just piggybacking off of what you just said, where I, I think this would be a positive if they went in this direction. Yeah. One would be just stabilizing this shockwave. It, it yeah. would be part of a stabilization of this shockwave that's been going on with just college sports and the NIL, trying to get something. Yeah. Now, I think they should do some sort of salary cap contract. Like That's, that's a whole different discussion, but yeah. trying to get it so, like, USC and Washington, they're not jumping to the big time. You got all these schools yeah. switching conferences every mm-hmm. year and all that. Like, it's just, it's a mess. Yeah, college football doesn't look anything like what we, either one of us or even people older than us, have been accustomed to seeing. Like, the way that, like you said, where is the Pac-12? What is the Pac-12? Yeah. Think about that. And that What is the Pac-12, bro? One of the great things about college mm-hmm. football, the traditions, the rivalries, yeah. the regional mm-hmm. aspect of it. Where, you know, yeah. Pitt was playing West Virginia, Pitt yeah. playing Penn State, you know, Pitt playing teams that are close by. Like, you yeah. build that rivalry, that, that closest where you could yeah. drive to the opposing I mean, state. It's the money and, part. The money, whether we're talking NIL transfer portal or money in the sense of programs, universities, jumping conferences, because it's like, yo, this is more lucrative to be in the Big Ten because of the TV deals. And you're like, okay, well, that's cool, but where's your next rival? Your nearest rival is in Ohio. He's in Michigan. You know, you got to go to Maryland one time. Like, you ever flown from L.A. to Maryland on a Tuesday? Like, what about you and that, that soccer team? That It's like that type of stuff you deal with, you know? But it's like, 
the money is there. The same reason why the coaches leave. The money. It's like, yo, money make the world go around. The second thing, this might be a more long-term thing, because mm-hmm. uh, you brought up like Texas or Alabama, how they could be very like self-sufficient. Yeah. A reason why I think them being on board with this would just be you're making your sport more interesting. Because I, I yeah. think as time goes on, if it becomes more and more of the have-nots where it's just like 10 teams that absolutely mm-hmm. dominate yeah. and then the rest of the 100 schools are just yeah. like, yeah, we have no chance at any of this. Like anytime mm-hmm. we have a good player, they're just going to go to an Alabama or Texas or something like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I think I mean essentially it, that's it, what it's it been, could though. incentivize them to see the bigger picture and say like, all right, for this to stay interesting, for mm-hmm. this to mean something, for college football to mean something to fans, like maybe it is good to just try to come together on this and yeah. make it not just all about Texas, not just yeah. all about Alabama. Because yeah, short term, I, I think you can make more money. Yeah, but long term. Are people going to be tuning in like that, you know, 20, 30 years down the line? My only devil's advocate would be, what do we call blue bloods, right? We call them blue bloods because they are the ones that throughout the duration have been the constant people always in the conversation. Kentucky basketball, UCLA basketball with John Wooden, right? When we talked about Texas football, when you talk about Florida State under Bobby Bowden, Ohio State, right? All these different teams where it's like, we ain't just talked about them in the past five years, ten years, man. I remember growing up talking about these same schools, watching these same schools. So at the same time, it's like, yeah, I think the diversity does help the brand as a whole. I think for them big schools, that's their argument. They're like, well, we've been dominant this whole time. How does that – why do we have to help them out for us to be better? It's That's the same argument that you have people to pay taxes. People with the money don't want to pay taxes to help out other people that don't have the money. And the people that don't have the money need the people to pay the taxes to help them out. So it's like you got to go back and forth to make the world go around. But the people up here, they don't want to help them. And the people down here, they need that help to help keep this thing going. You know how we do, bro. Yeah. Right. I, I guess at this point, it it's just not... Could it be? I don't know. I, I don't know. But it, it just comes off as it's not a level playing field at all. At least I would agree. in the past. I would agree. Yeah. You, we were under the guise that yeah, okay, everyone is divvying out x amount of scholarships to their mm-hmm. to those players, but now it's it's becoming like baseball where you got the Ohio States and yeah, the if Texas your bankroll is bigger than your bankroll, yeah. we're gonna get everybody we want. It's yeah. actually, in fact, it's worse than baseball yeah. because, say Pitt, mm-hmm. they get a stud coming in, like Jordan Addison, yeah. they get a stud. They can't even keep the yeah, dude they for like more contract. than a year. Yeah, at like, least that's in baseball, yeah. I got you under a contract. Once I have you, I got you for five. I got you for ten. I got you for however long I need to sign you. So I, I just, might trade you, but I still own your your rights. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. If that's gonna be the landscape, I think but maybe it just that's gets what it less and to, less though. interesting over time. But I hope it shifts to a situation where you do have some form of contract. So it's like, yeah, I'm not saying you ever cap what the dudes can make. I would never want to say that for them dudes. Let them make what they can make, man. But I do think if you make it where they have to at least be there for two years or at least be there, you know, for three years, however long we need to do it, it's like that part. Now, barring if you're going to the NFL, that's the outlier. If you're going to the NFL, cool. But to just right. be transferring, it's like, bro, you see some of these guys, like, yo, he's a four-year transfer guy. You're like, how you transfer every single year? Didn't work out here. I didn't like it here. I played here for years. Now I'm going to go. He's like, bro, no, they paid you, boys. So they paid you, boys. So they paid you. Boy. It's like, God, dog. Yeah. But we shall see, man. We shall see. Um, We did have some supers that came in earlier today, so let me read these off real quick, right. man. Shout out to the homie AJ Martinez on the front end because, yeah, this is AJ Martinez time. So he says, I'm liking, or I'm liking, since now am and D simply the best. Oh, he's saying I'm liking now since Moats and Deke are simply the best. This was at 11.05 a.m. today. Shout out to A.J. Martinez. Then he followed it up by saying, I want to move up in the draft and get Cooper DeGene because he's a cornerback. That's a CB1. I like your mindset. I like your mindset. We did talk about Cooper. Was that last podcast? Yeah. Yeah, last podcast we talked about him, man, and just some of the versatile ways that we could utilize him and um, how he could impact us. He did obviously come in for one of the official top 30 visits. So we know that that's a big, uh, you know, check mark in terms of 
the potential of drafting him, right? When we talk about some of the visits, pro day stuff, combine stuff. So, yeah, I definitely like that mindset. And then AJ also said, I normally don't compare kids to goats. But Cooper DeGene looks like Troy running around like a man possessed. There's only one, number 43. What if Cooper was close, though? Question mark. Well, he'd probably be a Hall of Famer then. Uh, yeah, yeah. Definitely be a Hall of Famer. If he's close to, if he even is sniffing Troy, yeah. Yeah, maybe he's not yeah. first bow, but you're Hall of Famer. You're Hall of Famer. Yeah. You're Brian Dawkins. We're loving that draft pick. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you're you elite. Yeah, we love you. All right. Shout out to Big, Big Play Zay. Also joining the upper room. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And then we also had AJ Martinez following that up by saying shout out to the loves. Or to my loves. Shout out to the shout out to my love daughters or my daughters that he loves, Lexi and his ex-wife. Question mark Michelle. I don't know if he's asking if that's his ex-wife. I, I don't know. He says, be safe traveling across the wasteland. We call New Mexico. Thanks to all the developers for ruining Santa Fe. Gentrification is the definition. All right. Okay. All right. Shout, shout out to AJ. Shout out to AJ right there. Yeah, he got some on his mind right there. He got some on his mind. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Sometimes AJ got to get it off his mind. He got it off his mind right there. So with that being the case, me, I hit that like button one time for AJ, man, because he is an absolute rock star. And if you are new to the channel and aren't familiar with how AJ gets down, subscribe, baby. This is how we roll over here, all right? This is how we roll. But now we're caught up, so it should be the King Herc, yeah. I believe. Yeah. This is what's good, boys. Y'all get bored. Check out a 7 fl sin city chaos out in cincinnati i'm number 41 okay. linebacker uh this must be a semi-pro Hold on. team i think i've heard no 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 no. i low-key feel like i've heard of this i don't know i might be off though because it's one of these leagues bro it's like a name like that where it's like legit tackle football but they got like just regular clothes like flag football attire oh wow yeah but they like really hit it and it's like i seen it on youtube a couple times bro i look i don't know if it's this league though bro but it's like that i was like yo they're crazy yeah let me see. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna chase this shiny object real quick all right so he says a7 fl yeah all right let me just see i just need to see these guys are in it for the love yes of this is bro they be in the joints in regular clothes, man. Regular, and they be hitting though, they man. Got jer- they got jerseys. Yeah, it's no it. pad tackle football, bro. Yeah, no pad tackle. They love the game, then, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They crazy, bro. They crazy. They really with it, man. I'm trying to show a player somebody get hit to. D- yeah, yeah, bro. They get active, man. This is like Fight Club, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They get active, bro. They get active. Yeah, yeah. I look at them like rugby players. They absolutely crazy. They loco, man. Shout out to them all, bro. Shout out to hey the King Hurt. Shout out to you, bro. I knew I knew that what was thing. His number? Uh, he's number forty one for Cincinnati, the A seven FL. Yeah, Cincinnati Chaos. Yo, ch- hey, yo, that's a fire little league. I ain't even gonna hold you, bro. That's a fire league. Okay, I've seen it a couple times, bro. It's a couple across. I was like, oh, what is this? Oh, oh, they're crazy. Shout out to y'all. So yeah, respect, man. Respect. Lando Potato. Who are some day three prospects you'd like to see the Steelers draft? Day three, well, first off, shout out to you, Lando Potato. We did actually talk about your mock. What was that last week? I feel like, man, I just remembered your name. But, um, you know, for me, man, Jalen Green is the guy that I would say late day, uh, day three option. Um, pass rusher, ultra productive, good length. Um, yeah. Was leading all of NCAA in sacks and tax for loss. Prior to him getting injured late in the year. So he is recovering. So, you know, that's part of why. He's a late round prospect, not a little third or fourth round option, but I would say him or even uh, Jordan Travis. I, I still I kind of like that. Or to a tiger or Talia Tiger Valor, like him too. I'm saying Luke McCaffrey. Shout out to Luke. Shout out. I think it'd be a great pickup. Shout out to Luke. Late rounds. Mm-hmm. Maybe one of these linebackers. Mm, who you got on your mind, man? Jalen Ford, Cedric Gray. I don't know where Gray's going to go, though. Cedric, I've heard him like, yeah. At the beginning, he was projected third round. Mm-hmm. Now I'm seeing fourth, mm-hmm. fifth. And you know when they project you fourth, fifth, that could turn into sixth, seventh easily, man. Yeah, it could be a steal. Yeah. So those are a couple names just off the top of my head. Yeah. All right, next we got J-Dub. Did y'all see Brandon Ayuk undercover as an Applebee's employee vid? Made me like the person Ayuk a lot, <laughs> not just as a player. Locker room yeah. energy, A+. plus. 
all right, all right. I like it, man. Nah, I, I did not see that, but I would definitely check that out, man, because I did see, uh, I forgot who was talking about, one of those reporters, they were like, you know, you got to worry about his, are you, are you going to worry about his uh, character or something like that now with Ayuk? And I'm like, how we get that just because my man isn't going to, you know, allow the organization to kind of just sit here and play with his rights while he's on the contract. If he feels like, yo, he wants to get compensated to a level that he thinks he's worth, it's like, man, he's not wrong for voicing that. And he's going about it still in a professional manner. He hasn't went outlandishly radioactive, <laughs> nuclear. We know what it can get like. He ain't done that. He has not done yeah, that. He's bro. done he ain't the done Gen that. Z stuff. Though. Yeah. Even the, is he Gen Z? I don't even know. Hey, go ahead. But he, he might be borderline between he's Gen done, Z like, and the young, yeah, He's doing the young guy stuff. It's like, all right, we yeah. get it. Like, you want some attention. We give you some attention. Does this get you to the, the check? We'll find out. Deontay worked for him. Deontay did a similar thing. And then you know how it is? Uh, unfollow, play dumb when they ask you about it. What? What you talking about, bro? Who did what on social media? Oh man, that's a social media. I don't you talking about, man. GP, you know how I got, uh, what, what? Social media. Oh man, I don't know talking about. Then the targets went up. You like, oh, all right, cool, it worked. Yeah, just just a little, you know, just get a little attention. That's it. Yeah, I think at this point his red flag is how much he wants with his contract. Yeah, that that's the only red flag I'd be worried about if I'm the Steelers yeah. trading for him. That's about it. If man. he wants thirty million, I don't think we can trade for you, dude. I'm sorry. <laughs> thirty million, love it. <laughs> Your market's probably twenty five. That's that's legitimately yeah. fair. Devonta Smith just got twenty five. Mm-hmm. Twenty five is fair, but uh, you know, do you, you cut a couple million off that to be a part of a good say, organization? Do you want to pay twenty five? I don't want to pay twenty. No, yeah, I don't think you're feeling great about that if you're no. the Steelers, especially because you have Pickens here. That's what like, I'm saying. That's the guy. Yeah, you're allocating that money to. If I want to give twenty five, I'll wait a year. Give you twenty five. Like I don't want to just give you twenty five. You know, I got to pay that. Yeah, and based on either one of our quarterbacks, if either one does what we want them to do, that number drastically goes up next year. Yeah. Now, if the Steelers do end up trading for Ayuk and paying him twenty five, there's a case for it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There's definitely a case for it because you do have the opportunity to go all in for yep. this year because of the agree. Russ contract and. Maybe you do want to see how this year plays out with Pickens before you give him yeah. that much type of money. You want to see how things go with Muth. There's nothing wrong with that. You want to see how things go with some of your young offensive linemen. There, what does Najee look like with a yeah, better offensive yeah. line so, and a better passing game? I just think there's a lot of things, out, a lot of questions out there for 2024. And if you feel like you could get a dude like Ayuk in here and it's not going to kill your future, mm-hmm. and you'll have some of those answers by the end of the offseason, you'll be able to finagle contracts and – do your workarounds then. I, I think you just wait. Yeah. If you got the opportunity to do this, pay the dude 25. Like, it's it's not going to be the end of the world. It doesn't kill anything. But yeah. that's a reason. I think that's a reason for the Steelers to be a little bit hesitant, though. If it's it's 25, ah, you'd be like, ah, is this worth it? Yeah. Like I, I see that side of it as well. Because 25 is still a pretty substantial chunk of your salary cap. Like, it doesn't kill it, but you notice it. Kinda. It's something that will affect, affect right. you long term. If you got 25 and it's dead money, it's like, hey, yo, that could really mess some things up for us. But it may not, depending mm-hmm. on how things play out in 2024. This is also true. Yeah, you're going to get some answers. Yeah. So it may turn out that, oh, wow, it's a good thing we paid Ayuk that money. Pickens, maybe he's not the $25 million player yeah. we thought. Maybe he's more of like a $13, $14 million player. Mm-hmm. And then depending on how Ross or Fields play, then that determines on what contracts you give those dudes. Yeah. Like you said with the Najee stuff, I think there's still a lot out there to be answered. Could you just trade Ayuk too? If you feel I'm sure like at some point you could. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I don't think it would be like you said, the catch end of the release. You're not I would appreciate man. the effort. Like I appreciate the effort of the Steelers looking yeah. into an Ayuk or a Higgins. Yes, absolutely, man. Because that's we can. Different. We can afford it. And this is different. Why not? If you can get one of them dudes, at least pick up the phone, make them say no. Make them say no, man. And like we said yesterday, I don't think there's anything Omar Khan has done thus far or will do that's going to absolutely destroy our future. Yeah. Which is good money, man. That's good business. A2A style. They could have made AI statue bigger, though. It looks (laughs) like the Heisman Trophy. They (laughs) did him wrong. I'd like to see it beside Rocky. Glad they did it, though. Man, that's... Yeah, we... I, I mean... It's a statue, baby. That's how I look at it, man. But if you look, all the statues that are made 
around the Sixers spot, they all the same size. So it's like, I don't know. I mean. So AI is as tall as Dr. J. Yeah, they-, they all like the same size. Yeah, but it's like they spaced out. So it's all like the same size, bro. Okay. But yeah, whereas like Rocky is like a full body statue. You feel me? Like a. Oh, so these know. statues are just like trophies? No, so it's like halfway on a platform. So think like where you're sitting, right to your shoulders. If that's the showcase, if it's uh, okay. an individual like. It's in a glass case. But it's outside though. So imagine like if this is like a marble like column right here. Okay. And then it gets to your shoulders. Then from your shoulders to probably the top sneaker box in here. You know what I mean? Is where like the actual like figure is. That's why they say it. Oh, like, that's pretty cool. But they're saying like, oh, bro, it's like the pictures show just the trophy part. You're like, bro, that thing is tidy. You're like, yeah, if you're just looking at the trophy in comparison, everybody that's around in this tight room, like, yeah, sure, it's gonna look. It's a whole ordeal. But it's like everybody is just looking the exact same. But they like, yo, they just short of my dog. Yeah, so that's <laughs> my thing. But you know, you know the internet, the internet going internet, bro. But I'm like, bro, how are we complaining about my man getting a trophy? I mean, not a trophy, getting a statue. I'm like, bro, I, hey man, I'm from the seven five, baby. Yeah, yeah. If you, you could just put a plaque up with my name, and I'm gonna be over here like, bro, we we made it. So, yeah, man, I, I won't trip it on that. It could have been yay big. It would be like, yo, that's the most fire trip. All my cats back cold, bro. We all like, bro, that thing's fire. We need to go to Philly. <laughs> Just go take a picture with it, bro. Like, with this man, bro. Like, that's our guy. Field know? trip. We talked about it. Oh, yeah? Yeah, we definitely talked about it. And one of my man's from Philly, too. We're like, yeah, bro. I mean, not from Philly, but he's like, he spent time with it. He's like, bro, pull back up, bro. I'm just like, yo, man, we need to, we need to head up, bro. Why not? Because I, I want to take the picture with it, bro. Like, I would, like, yo, it's. AI. One of my high school cats, he sit the pitch. I'm like, bro, you got the. Oh, you beat me to it. Yeah, bro. It's fire. It's fire, bro. So that's my thing, man. So, yeah. But shout out to the slot. Shout out to the statues, though. Shout out to the sixes. And shout out to Rocky statue as well, man. Because I have seen that. That thing is like massive. But, yeah, I don't even know who put Rocky statue there. I'm not a Philly guy like that. Yeah, I don't know who put his statue there. Because it's like super random. It's like a movie. It is a movie. Yeah, I don't know either. Shit. <laughs> Steel the Nation on Fire. I mean, you want to talk about It's movies. like, who put the statue there, what, bro? You, I mean, you think I would know about that? You think I... I, I didn't see Rocky. <laughs> You're but. right. Oh, my God. Rock, you do know who he is, though, right? I know who he is. Oh, all right. Whew. Just last alone. Shout, shout out. There we go. There we go. There we go. But you know, you, what? I actually saw Creed. I've I've seen the. How the heck are you going to see Creed and not watch Rocky? I haven't seen Ew, all bro. three of them. I think I saw Ew. Creed one and Creed two. You watch two Creeds and you haven't watched yeah. a single Rocky? That is disgusting, bro. I yeah. can't believe you said that, bro. I watched a Creed and I'm like, I should watch more Creeds, but I'm just like, yo, there's a this is a Rocky knockoff. It's like the Fast Furious thirteen. I feel like I'm watching Fast and Furious thirteen when I'm watching Creed three. That's what I feel like I'm watching. Okay, I like the original. Keep me back to the ride. Keep me back to, to Fast and Furious up until my man Paul Walker passes. Then after that, y'all kind of just, yeah, y'all, y'all lost me. Y'all bringing in too much stuff, man. All right. Might be too late for me. Creed's Creed. my original. Oh, maybe, my maybe God. Maybe I got Creed over Rocky. Yai, yai. Maybe I'll be disappointed when I watch oh. Rocky. How did this happen? How? I don't, like, D, it's, not a, it's, not a, it's not a lot of stuff that you say. It just makes me be like, yo, how? I thought that one would be funny. But yeah, that's I the one I'm just Rocky like, how? It. How did you watch Creed 1 and then turn around and watch Creed 2? And yeah. not watch one rock? <sighs> yeah, baby. This is crazy. This is crazy. <laughs> Shout out, though. <laughs> Steal the Nation on Fire. Yo, you watch Creed 1 and Creed 2? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I love it. I, I think love at least one of them I saw in the theater. <laughs> you, wow. That is a lot, D. That is a lot. You ain't just watch. You actually went to the theater to watch it, D. That's a full on commitment, bro. I think one of them. That's, that's wow. That's, ah, I'm hurt, bro. I just, ah. Uh, I don't remember which one. Ah. Uh, it's Rocky, bro. Ah. Uh, Never got around to it. Adrian! It's Rocky, bro. <laughs> Come on, how you gonna watch Lil Creed? Creed don't even hit because you never seen what happened to Creed. You ever seen what happened to Apollo Creed? Have you I know lived? The story. No, you know the story, but you don't know the story. You don't know the story. You ain't seen them boys go from warriors against each other, and now they run on the beast together, jumping up. You know how many times when I would train, I would want to emulate that moment right there. I want that moment. I want to be running with my guy. We full speed, sprinting on the beast. We jump in the air. Ha! Ah, it's because Rocky and Apollo. Creed. And you're gonna watch Creed one and Creed two and not witness that. 
You didn't see when he taught him about, yo, we got to get your footwork right, man. You, you heavy-handed, you flat-footed, bro. You, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's get, 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 uh, let me get you right. Let me get you right. Come on. Bro. Oh. Oh. You hear what I'm Living in America. Come on, man. Oh. You're really selling it. I just, oh. That hurt me more than you not seeing Friday, bro. I see it. <laughs> they bringing up you not seeing Friday. I'm just like, no, this this hurt. That one incoming this, to America. This hit way oh, because at least you didn't watch. It's like a knockoff version or, or like the spinoff of Friday. It's like, yo, it's no spinoff. So he's like, yo, you didn't see Friday. You just ain't seen Friday. Hey, you never watched Coming to America. You ain't watched the new Coming to America. You just ain't seen Coming to America. It's cool. But like, if you go watch a new Coming to America before you watch the OG Coming to America, it's like, bro, what are you doing? Like, how did you do that one? It, that's the way it's just like, yo, you would saw Creed 1 and Creed 2 before you watch any other. It's five old Rocky movies, bro. Like, Rocky. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I love it, bro. Shout out to you, man. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. Uh, at all. Oh, my God. Cut me, Mick. Cut me. <laughs> oh, come on, D. Don't do me like that, D. Oh. Oh, man, man, man. I love it, bro. This is crazy. Yeah, see the the eye of a tiger. It's the that song don't mean nothing to you, bro. Like you hear that song is just good music. When we hear that song, it yeah, it's means, like a hype song. No, no. When I hear Eye of the Tiger, I think Rocky. You know why? Because you gotta watch Rocky to understand why you think Rocky with that song and that. It, it, they just go hand in hand, bro. It's hand in hand. Oh man, I did see Talladega Nights though. Shout out to Talladega Nights. If you ain't first, you last. I respect that. That that's. Oh, man. Yeah, toss my horses. I know Deeks. Oh, tell man. Nice. Shout out. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. That is crazy. <laughs> Shout out to 828 Style. Man, my man that brought up the Rocky statue, and we just learned so much about Deeks that I did not want to learn today. Oh, man, man, man. You learn something new. I ain't want to learn that one. Dang, go, Deeks. But as long as you're alive, there's hope. There's hope that one day it might just be playing on TV. AMC. They play it a lot like Jurassic Park. Can't go wrong. Catch a marathon. All right. Yeah, it's just one of the days. I just hope it just stumbles on your TV. Rocky movies are a much bigger commitment, though, than a Friday or coming to America. Uh, It's a series, but you don't have to watch all of them. Like, it's not a series. It's it's, it's five movies. You don't have to watch them all. You watch one, and yeah, most of the time it's kind of like tattoos. They say you get one, you can't stop. You watch the first Rocky, you'll make time for the next one. That's what they say. And then the next one, and you'll make time for the next one, too. Cause you ain't even you ain't even had to leave the country. You ain't went to Russia yet, have you? See, you ain't never been to Russia. You ain't had to train in that it, it, over in the woods. Uh, you, you ain't had to go in. It. You ain't never had to do that, man. Come on, baby. No, no, no. You ain't never seen. I think that was one of the stories come on, in baby. Uh, Creed too. Come on, baby. Uh, where you think you got it from? You see yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Come on, man. Man, you ever went to the meat freeze and beat up beef? You ever done that? Nah, nah. Cause we can't afford no punching bags. So I'm gonna take you to the meat factory, man. Let's get. Tss, tss. Come on, man. Shout out to you, bro. I like it. Shout out. Steer Nation on fire. Watson said Steelers defense is very limited in what we can do on defense, which doesn't make sense. Who's Watson? Deshaun Watson. Deshaun? When did he say this? What? What? Hold on. I missed this. The Steelers defense is limited, he said. Something about base personnel. Oh, probably like personnel groupings. Yeah. I can see what he's... I... I can see how that can be said and it's accurate, but I can also see what he said. We take it completely left because it's a... Well, yeah, because he's 0-3 yep. against yep. the Steelers and yep. played terrible against us. <laughs> I was like, for certain, I can see how that's going to be taken all the way left. Yeah. But I get what he's trying to say. But, yeah, that's yeah, that's still going left, bro. <laughs> he tripping. Why he, why he do that? Was this provoke? Was he doing an interview or did he just... just... I think he's got a podcast. Oh, God, <laughs> <laughs> oh god, dog. See, it's the podcast boys, man. <laughs> the podcast boys are crazy, man. Yeah, Deshaun Watson yeah. has a podcast. Yeah, podcast boys as well. Bro, I Who would have thought? I did not know he had a podcast, bro. I missed this, man. Yeah, yeah, he's tripping. Of yeah. all the people, huh? Yeah, I'm like, bro, you. Yeah, that ain't what you want, bro. That yeah, because see, you just said this. He does I, it consistently. I missed this. Yeah, I missed this one. So it's like Pat Peter. Yeah, I think it is. Do you see what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Easy. <laughs> Be careful with that thing, man. 100%. Because <laughs> you say stuff like this, and I was like, ah, 
It was already Pat an Peace. issue now. Pat P said many things yeah. early last year. <laughs> that it's like, okay, cool. All right. Just back it up. Yeah. You didn't back it yeah, up. Yeah, you said we're limited. Okay, all right. It's been a, it's been pretty limited with this whooping they be giving you every time they're seeing you now. It's been limited, but I'm just, all right. You know we didn't add it, Mr. Unlimited, to go with this limited whooping that we've been giving you now. So you just better be careful now because that don't sound like something that you should be saying. That's all. Like others could say, but you specifically say, ah, Yeah, X Concept says ah, Watson meant to say Steelers ah, defense makes me very limited yeah, in what I can do it, when playing. That, that's, that yeah, would have made more sense. It would have made way. We would have. I would have liked the quote. I was like, you know what? Hey, shout out to you, self awareness. I like that, man. Yeah. Yep. He's tripping, bro. He is tripping. Yeah. That has he seen how he's played? Dude, that's going on. Dude, you see what it looked like. Going on. It's been. It's been a rough go for him. It's been a very, very rough go for him, man. Yeah, he, Let's podcast. Just, just chill out. Just stay low. Lifted one smoking on that Warriors Dynasty pack. Light the B. Yeah, the Dynasty done so, bro. The Dynasty is done, done. Shout out to Lifted Ones, man. Light the beam. Light the beam. I low key am excited to see how y'all do versus uh OKC, man. Cause like I said, I feel like well, y'all they gotta beat the Pelicans, right? Well, yeah, but the problem is Zion's not playing. He pulled the hammy late in the game, man, so he's out. Yeah. I'm just like I don't see Sacramento losing to the Pelicans without Zion. I think Zion's there a different combo, but I don't see them losing to him like that. But I like it though, man. I want to see what's going. On. I forgot uh, what's going on with Malik Monk. That's what I need to find out because he wasn't playing last night. I was a little surprised by that. Oh, he's actually good. Yeah, he's, he's a good Heck player, yeah, man. I, yeah. I thought he was just a bench player somewhere. Nah, nah, nah. He was hurt though. Yeah, I just want to check him out. See what's going on. Cliff the Dark Knight, pick got the number one receiver prospect out of Massachusetts, Cameron Montiero from my hometown, Brockton, Mass. Should be really good for Pitt. Okay, so, yeah, we lost some guys. All right, all right. Thanks for the info, Cliff the Dark Knight, because number one receiver I'm not hearing any good just, things okay. coming out of what's going on with Pitt football right now, so at least I got some positive news there. Shout out. Cliff the Dark Knight, you're from Brockton, oh, so Massachusetts, that's, bro? That's not even a transfer portal thing, though. I guess that's just... That's high school recruitment yeah, right there, yeah. Okay. Which is still important, though, because yeah, anytime is. they got the number ones beside them, sometimes so he, teams want to poach them. So is he going to be here for 2024 or is that next year? Or is that, that's yeah, probably, that's that's probably a good for question, year. bro. Yeah. that's this year. Because we're only in April right now. Yeah. yeah. He wouldn't have Unless he committed a junior year. Yeah. Yeah. But if you commit as a junior, you commit to pit. Yeah. You know, it's like, not trying to be disrespectful. It's oh, like, come what, on, dude. I'm just dying. Right, my bad, bro. I just ain't know. Some people do. I, I'm, I'm new to the area, bro. All right. I see people commit to Penn State. As a junior, like I look at the other cool boys, oh, he's committed to Penn State, he's committed to this. I'm like, someone, I'll, I'll right, give you cool. this. Someone know, from yeah. Massachusetts, I wouldn't expect. Okay. We obviously got the pipeline, Western Pennsylvania, yeah. Pennsylvania. Like local dudes would commit. Even early. like Jersey or like New York, I would expect like uh, an early commit. And I don't know if that's just strictly hoops because we had a okay. pipeline there going back to like Ben Hallen and okay. Jimmy Dixon. But now, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it would just be like Western PA getting gotcha. an early commit. Yeah, because I was like, I would like I wouldn't think of Jim you getting an early commit as a junior. I'm like, oh, why are you committing there as a junior? Yeah, if you, I think if you already got that offer, here. yeah, I'm like, if you already got that offer as a junior, he's like, what else can you get there, bro? Yeah. Well, either way, number Respect one wide though. receiver prospect yeah. out of Massachusetts. So please, the next Jordan Addison. Hey, or the next Larry Fitzgerald. More Fitzgerald because Fitzgerald will stay. Although Fitzgerald went You're to the pros. <laughs> Fitzgerald went to the pros early. <laughs> My dog he was only here. Fitzgerald stay. was only here for two years. Then he went to the pros. So, so Addison he was, was here longer. Shirt. What? Addison was here longer. No, same amount. Okay. It's just that Addison didn't red shirt. Mm. Freshman, sophomore, and then goes to USC. Junior yeah. goes to draft. Fitzgerald, I think he red shirted because that's how he was eligible for the pros after his sophomore mm. year. Red shirt freshman, red shirt sophomore, and went pro. So yeah, both of them played two years at Pitt. That's crazy. Shout out. That is crazy, though. Fitzgerald had to have won the Bolitnikoff. Fitzgerald, yeah. He, he was, like, the best ever. So I was like, say, how they yeah. talk to him. Two great receivers right there. AJ Martinez, shout to all. Did my early supers pop up? Tap yes, yes, seven. yes. We, we didn't tap in, man. Absolutely, absolutely. And shout out to you, baby. All right. Uh, Mike Hood, shout out to all. We spoke about down safeties and how college doesn't really prepare them for that. O State taking Sonny Styles and moving him to safety from safety to linebacker. Stay tuned. Maybe mm. for next year. Okay. All right, all right. I like that then. Sonny Styles. Make sure we check him out. I'm guessing he's uh gonna be playing for Ohio State mm -hmm. next year. 
switching positions. You're switching, yeah. Going from that box safety to the linebacker. I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of what we talked about if Edmonds were going to, uh, if Edmonds would have ever made the full time switch to linebacker. Right. Yeah. AJ Martinez says, LOL, you wild 5'5. Five, five. Hey, salute you, baby. You know what time it is. AJ Martinez, 5'5. Five, five. Disregard my question on early supers. 5'5 five, five, Diggler. <laughs> Number one, Sabotage 7, Sabotage 2-2. Two, two. Pay the man, TG. <laughs> Who else needs Sabotage, LOL? TG Sabotage, man. I ran out of thoughts. Yeah, everybody gets Sabotage. We're getting Sabotaged by TG right now. By we, TG. We, we yeah. bumped up the show early. Where is TG? All right. All right. He's sabotaging that. Shout out to my dog, though. All right. Shout out to my dog. Yeah. The King Hurt. Jeremy McCombs. Tune in this Sunday. We play the heist. It's a top 10 matchup. We both are undefeated. Bet. Let's so Jeremy go. Jeremy McCombs is his name. Jeremy, we're gonna find out his number too. We should pull him. I think up. he said forty one. No, 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 no. Not 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 his numbers. I know because the King Herc is number forty one. Uh, he said Jeremy McCombs, though. I think that's what he's saying. His oh, name is, oh, he's saying his actual his name, name is Jeremy McCombs. Yeah. Got you. Okay. So yeah, Jeremy McCombs number forty one. Shout out to Jeremy McCombs then, baby. Let's get it. Top ten matchup, undefeated versus undefeated, man. Okay, okay. Linebacker, man. I need to match. Is you hitting something, man? What's up, man? How are you you gonna put something down, man, this weekend, man? What's up? Oh, don't get me going, bro. Don't get me going. You know, I just I was out here deep. I was supposed to be buttoned up yesterday. It's doing this day going an event at the the stadium, Steelers STEM, right? So it's supposed to be educational. I'm supposed to be buttoned up, but it's like on field element too. Deep before I can even get to the educational talking. Leading the panel discussion portion, they put me on that field first, bro. I'm dripping sweat because I am so fired up. I'm having these little middle schoolers that are supposed to be here to learn about science and stuff. Now nah, we hitting pads, getting downhill, bro. Like I just love it, man. Do you love the game? I love the game, D. I love it. it's in my things, man. I can't help it. Can't get can't enough come of back it, bro. Soon enough. Can't get enough of it. Jeremy McCombs, put something down this weekend, man. Come on. You're sounding like Sean Payton out here. No, 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 no. All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Sorry, guys. All right. It's game day. Little man got a baseball game. We're fired up, as y'all can tell, okay? Just chill out. Just chill out. <laughs> Do it in a nice, safe way, okay? Just just play you the might game. Get some penalties yeah, for this yeah, uh, yeah, Cincinnati yeah. team here. No, no penalties. Some just play, play the game the right way, awesome please. Graphic. Make good decisions while you're on the field. All right? Take care of your brothers. All right, take care of the guys you're competing against. Don't, don't, don't listen to me. I'm sorry. This is game day of the household. We amped up, bro. I'm about to put the war paint on, man. I might be in the crowd like this. Ah! <laughs> AJ Martinez says, Clubber, what's your prediction for me? <laughs> pain, LOL. Pain! That's a Rocky reference, bro. Yeah. Mr. T, because Mr. T, he, he's in one of them. Sorry. Well, bro. Yeah, Clubber Lane, man. Out. Club of Lane, man. Nah, nah. It was big time smoke with Club of Lane, bro. Big time smoke, man. But yeah, he hit hard. He phew, mean. Can you beat him? No, nah, I don't know you beat that one, man. That dude's mean. He's ferocious. He's fast. He's angry. Oof. Yeah, you. he kill you. <laughs> Asar MK. Deke, you tripping. Go watch Rocky 1 to 3 right now. <laughs> Try to tell you, bro. They want. Hey, it's. You won't regret it whenever you do decide to tune it. If you decide to tune it, bro, you wouldn't regret it. But it's definitely fire. It's, yeah. It's what it was where you talk about just like the same way we say kind of like with Friday. It's like, or how Snoop Dogg, it doesn't matter, black, white, wherever you're from. Like you just, you rock with it. Rocky's one of them ones like that, bro. It's just like, yo, it don't matter where you're from, what side of the tracks, you can get with this and you're going to get like hooked because it's fire. Yeah. And even for the ladies, it's even got like the lady element in it, man. A little love interest, stuff like that, bro. So yeah, man. Okay. Mm-hmm. Rocky gets the the check. Rocky goes through a lot, bro. Oh wow. Rocky goes through a lot. You got, he doesn't have one main check. You just gotta watch. I don't want to spoil it for oh, you, man. but he goes through a lot, bro. Like Rocky's a good dude, but it, man, it's life, bro. Just be lifing. Life be lifing sometimes, bro. Life be lifing. But shout out to Adrian. Deke's baby mama is back. Whoa. She asks, Whoa. when will we finish our colonoscopy role play, D? <laughs> she said at the end of the day, the day going in, D, you better bust it open. That's what she said, bro. Uh, that's Dang. fake news. <laughs> she's about to say, Lord, she's trying to help you out. I'm going to put fake news on that one. <laughs> she's a doctor. That's what she said. You ain't tell us your baby mom was a doctor, D. <laughs> Why you ain't tell us she was a doctor? All right. Hey, colonoscopies, that's completely medical, man. They do them all the time. It was up in St. Clair and I don't know these other hospitals, but they do them all the time. All right. So if that's if that's your thing, hey, bro, we ain't tripping on that. You got to get better at it. She got to get better at it. And practice makes perfect. All right. So I get it. Which, which medical school is she at? Is she UPMC? Where's she at, man? 
Deke, Deke ain't tell us he putting his old baby mama through medical school this whole time. Deke been playing. He been quiet. Deke, we thought Deke was just changing the fit. We thought he was just getting drippy. Nah, Deke got a whole doctor in the building. She giving up colonoscopies. Deke, that's crazy. Deke, that is crazy, bro. I'm going to be like you and I grow up, bro. Got a doctor on the side. She's got a doctor. You're much of a doctor. It's chilling out here. It's chilling. You ain't tell us nothing. You just, you show up every day, super humble, hard worker. I'll be like, yo, Deke, man, you just get out the mud. Deke got a doctor over here. She get colonized with cheeks. Woo! Shout out, bro. Shout out. <laughs> yeah, that one's a uh, fake news. <laughs> they playing with y'all, bro. Why y'all playing like this today, bro? Why they playing like this today, Deke? They tripping. <laughs> Uh, Killer Kakoa. <laughs> Mikey Hood, call you Freaky Deaky. He back in the building. Oh, no. <laughs> nah, that's, that ain't it. Nope. That's too freaky. <laughs> nope, nope. That, that ain't happening. Nope. I should not be laughing. This is <laughs> funny, though, bro. God, dog. That's just <laughs> Deak Diddler. <laughs> hey, man, y'all gonna chill, man. Don't do him like that, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This It's pretty wild. <laughs> it's pretty wild. <laughs> All right, I'm back. I'm chill. I'm chill. Oh man, y'all are wild. Y'all stop with these comments too, bro. Chill out. <laughs> X concepts your wallet. I love it. It's y'all wallet. <laughs> We're not gonna repeat this stuff on the audio, only people. All right, so if y'all wanna know why we laughing or why I'm laughing like that, man, just yeah, go back into the comment section and read the live chat, bro. Minute twenty one. Yeah, hour twenty one of this thing, man. It's yeah, y'all are wild. Shout out to y'all though, man. Killa Kikoa. Aloha. Did TG see Brock Bowers do a backflip? You know he sold on him. You already know that. If you can backflip, he like you. I wanted him to answer this day going be, be ready today because we got to talk to him about the Justin Fields, you know. Anytime you see a little workout, anything come out, man. You know TG, that's that's the guy's going to tell you. He's going to give you the breakdown. Like I said, when you do the backflip, he's like, yo, that's the first rounder. Yeah, we'll to get have his, to ask him. He, yeah, what's his thoughts on it, bro? Yeah. He did a backflip, bro. What's up? I stressed him. Missed the days when the Steelers' D motto was Clubber Lang's prediction mm -hmm. for the fight. Mm -hmm. Pain. Can we land a nose tackle? Mm hmm. Now we need. Well, have we really talked nose tackle like that, though? I don't think we have, right? That's like Not a major really. name. We talked like some I Mason Smith yeah, type. Yeah. Someone late in the draft, fourth round um, or something. Jordan Jefferson was another dude. I think we've talked about the LSU boys. We talked uh Tavondre Sweet or Tavondre Sweat at, at some point out of Texas. He's falling down the boards. Yeah. Some self inflicted. <laughs> um I think who was Yeah, a lot of people I, I just want to say this before we get into the drafts. A lot of yeah. people, uh, a lot of Steeler fans, it seems, are trying to take full advantage of sweat. Well, falling well, down these drafts, you, you know, j j just like how sweat fall down your head, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, if you're gonna fall, I mean, we might as well. Just, sometimes you gotta pick them up, yeah. So, I said, yeah, redemption, <laughs> right? You ever had a second chance? Just, you know, we'll, we'll, the Steelers we'll, can rehab them, you know, ain't that wrong with that, L literally and figuratively, ain't that wrong with that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Bring them to Coach T, can't get wrong with Coach T, yeah. Right. What, what place would you rather him be? Coach T, right? Under yeah. Coach can't go T wrong. and his tutelage, can't go wrong there, man. Toss Mahal also brought up Christian Boyd out of Northern Iowa. We talked about him as well, interior guy. So, yeah, we've talked about some interior uh, nose tackles, man. And, yeah, we do have some options, man, um, in terms of guys we can land. I don't feel like we're outside of the Tavondre sweat. I don't think we're talking to anybody early. All right. Yeah, no. Yeah, I, don't think, I think that's the only, literally the only one. line receiver yeah. and corner before yeah. defensive tackle. All right. If Sweat is falling, like, to that level, then right. it's the whole Cam Hayward situation. Like, all right, this dude was way higher on our big board. He's available to us. Why we want him, you know? But outside of that, yeah, I don't – I ain't tripping. Because we still have willing and able bodies in there. And we have enough talent that is high end that can still – like I said, as long as they stay healthy, it still works in there. Uh, all right, we got A two A style. Watson said we're a limited defense because we don't do happy endings. He don't. Hey yo, <laughs> wow, wow, A two A style. Wow, bro, that's crazy, man. Why are you doing this today? Come on, man. That's that's a lot, man. It's a, it's a, it's a family friendly. Hold on, we're hour twenty four. Right, we good. We good. We good. 
Not the first 10 minutes. We good. You get it off your chest. God, dog, that's, yeah. Let's see, you bring up a good point. We we definitely don't do that over here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we trying to have you have a nightmare. You, you, the furthest day away from happy ending with us. Yeah, furthest day. Yeah. He don't get skit everywhere like he used to. <laughs> Just try to get this kicked off, bro. Just try to get this kicked off. I'm convinced. Just try to get this kicked off. All right. Let's go. I get it. I thought y'all liked this. They don't like us, Dick. They don't like us at all. No, no, they don't like us, bro. They don't like us. Oh, what you doing? I think the chat just wants to. Oh, man. That's, yeah. Ah. Ah. Work off their ah. uh, minds for comedy, I guess. It yeah. We, we got ah. Canadian. And it was like, you know what? He said we outside of that time frame. We could just say whatever right now. Ah. Within the reek, ah, you that's don't unload the clip, though, Lord. Yeah, Whew. boo man 318. <laughs> what's up, Mojo and Deke? Mad what's the word? League, what's the word? Still alive, season three, week four. Okay, okay, still trying to fill all 32 slots. If interested, DM on Instagram for Discord invite. All right, all right, you heard what he said right there. You heard man, what he said, this man. League is bumping. Let's get it, baby. Let's get it. Shout out to Boo Man as well, man, because you steady rocking with us, man. But you also multitask, and I like it, man. So hopefully the league is booming and continuing to go up, up, up. So yeah, man, if y'all down to play, man, get in with the homie Boo Man. Hit him up on IG for the Discord invite. Oh, and shout out to you, uh, X Concepts as well, man. He's a priest of the early stream today man you know don't 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 thank me thank thank deke and thank little g because it's game day it's game day aj martinez says deke calling dr love in the end you'll be let in i don't even want to know bro i don't even want to know i don't even want to know because last time we was talking about anything with the doc was the colonoscopy i don't let her in deke don't 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 let her in Cause once you open that door, that that woo. And AJ Martinez. Yeah, is don't open that door, bro. Don't open that door. Throw in some side in you end us. Yeah, so definitely don't open that door, bro. Yeah, did lock it. Throw away the key. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if we could trust. Get AJ a guard dog. Yeah, get a guard dog. Get you a kick stop. Yeah, get you like a, a laser. Yeah, just all type of just acid lava. Just, yeah, do not stay away. Beware of dogs. Just throw it away over there, bro. I got you, man. <laughs> Got you. See it. I like it, man. I like it. 3.30 almost. <laughs> Salute, bro. We cooking. We right where we need to be. So with that being the case, man, I guess we will get to this first topic that we was going to get to at one point today. Because players did officially start reporting to OTAs phase one. Um, Like I said, man, this is still the, un- uh, the non-mandatory portion, but we do like to acknowledge, man, when we do see the guys pulling up and stuff like that, because it's more so just a commitment, man. It's more so just... I'm saying to the guys, man, yo, we here. We all agree that, man, we're trying to get better. We want to do it collectively. We could obviously go work on our own at our own places. And there is nothing against those guys that do that, man. I've had great teammates that did that, and nothing ever was an issue. But at the same time, man, it is something about when you're all there, man, and we're willing to be here when we know we don't have to be here, man. So when you see dudes like Russ, Justin Fields, you see Pickens, you see Move, you see all these dudes, man, that – we know that we're, you know, fans that we want to see continuing to grow and be better. All them dudes being in that building right now, man, I think it's a huge, man, uh, a huge step in the right direction for us this season, man. So, like I said, man, I wanted to, you know, tap into them dudes and, you know, shout out to them cats like that, man. Yeah, is there any anything, like, really interesting <laughs> no, going on so, right now? So I didn't see anything. Like, I nothing think Pat Fryer just gave a quote or two. Yeah, nothing for us here. But what we talked a little bit earlier, I said, man, during OTA season, you kind of learn stuff, right? So phase one of OTAs is not mandatory, but you always try to see who's showing up, who's not, who's disgruntled, who's not. League-wide, though, we talked about Cortland Sutton at one point, potentially being one of those guys that we could, you know, are you interested, not interested in. OTAs have started for those guys out there, and he's not there, and he's already said that he's not there because he wants a new contract. So... Well, I don't want to give him a new contract. Well, fair enough on that. We understand that part. But in terms of an option, yeah. as we talked Absolutely. about the Brandon I use, we talked about the T. Higgins. It's like, well, now we know for a fact there is smoke, there is fire because of this phase starting. And now this is the first thing where we're actually seeing him say, you know, I'm not going to be here until this gets done. So that's the part where I am like, okay, but what's the number for a dude like Cortland Sutherland? Well, I would love to... 
get him on like the Stefan Diggs program, uh-huh. trade for him, and then somehow <laughs> delete all of his other years <laughs> and just make this a one year deal, yeah. and that's it. Because you're right, the Texans did do that, but I don't think Sutton's contract is uh, anything crazy. It's like two years left. Yeah. But if he wants a new contract, then I, I don't think he's going to be that happy going to a new team and not getting a contract where he worked. I think that's going to be all part yeah. of the deal. I would assume maybe maybe that's a ploy to just get a change of scenery, though, too. That could also be the case, yeah. yeah I don't maybe want, I don't maybe want he's a little happier here. playing under the contract here in Pittsburgh than yeah. opposed to being in Denver. And what are the numbers that he's getting right now in his deal? Because that's the other it's part. Like it's like $13 million a year. That's actually lower than I thought. I don't know why I thought he was higher teens. I thought he was around Deontay's range. Yeah, he got his contract a few years ago, 2021. Hmm. Average salary, 15, sorry. Okay, 15, um, okay. Cap hits for the next two years are 17 each. Yeah. Dead cap, only $9 million this year. Hmm. 17 cap hit, dead cap, 9. Broncos could just cut him. I mean, if that happens, then great. That'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't think he's going to be signing with a team for – I know he wants a new contract. I don't think he's signing for more than that right now if you're just let loose on the open market. Well, because I was going to ask you, 15. if you're the Steelers, would you pay him what you paid Deontay? I win it. No. Yeah. Mike Williams just got a one-year $15 million deal yeah. with the Jets. Mm-hmm. No, Mike was coming off the injury, though. Yeah, I think Sutton's been – I don't know. I mean, Williams ain't terrible. Sutton's Sutton hasn't lived like up all the way consistent. either, though. Yeah, exactly. He ain't lived up all the way. In, right, yeah. right. He's been banged up a little bit. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, I can't see him getting more than 15. If he just wanted it to be a one-year deal, but that would be the range still. Yeah. And that would work out for the Steelers, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Cause I'd, I was, I'd take that all day. I'm trying to think from the Steelers' perspective, could you make any – one year situation makes sense where you would bump that number up. If he's at fifteen right now, could you talk yourself into maybe seventeen? I still can't. Ju- like to me, I have a hard problem saying I would pay Cortland Sutton at eighteen when I was paying Deontay Johnson eighteen, and we didn't want to keep that because to me, I still think that DJ is just I think a better player. Yeah, maybe he wants more guarantees. That could all, how much guarantee is uh do you have left on the deal? Yeah, I have no clue, but I'm guessing not that much if the dead cap's nine, the cap hits seventeen for this year, and then next year the dead cap's three, the cap hits seventeen. Yeah, so it can't be anything. So it's basically they go he's yeah. basically left on a one year deal. Yeah. Right now, as is. That's probably just yeah. he probably just wants some security for an extra two, three years. So maybe he's not looking for a higher average salary necessarily Mm -hmm. just more years just more guarantees more security uh okay i don't want to do for multiple multiple years 10 11 see you tell take a big guy oh (laughs) You cut throat with it long. I'll we'll give you more security. <laughs> they said, look, I'm going to extend you. <laughs> give you more money, but I'm going to pay you less per year. Dang. Cold-blooded with it. <laughs> he could be great value. Oh, 100% he could. Like, I'm not opposed to getting court inside. And I think he would fit what we already have in terms of the bigger bodies. We still feel great about or still feel really good about GP. So we're not asking something to be something that we haven't seen him turn into at this stage in his career it's like yo that just might be who he is you know what contract kills this right now is the jerry judy deal Ooh, 17 and a half million. Oh god but you look at the judy's other guys ba- but judy's more productive isn't he i don't know it's, it's, we're splitting hairs but judy and judy got paid later so he's younger yeah he's younger yeah. different stage of his career yeah. like sutton already signed his big mm-hmm. deal so you look at some of the guys that are in this range, though. Tyler Lockett's getting 15. Hopkins is getting 13. Gabe Davis just got 13. Mm-hmm. Mooney got 13. Lazard, 11. Jacoby Myers got 11. Tyler Boyd see, I t- coming I off think of 10. Sutton, I think Sutton has been more productive than those dudes, though. Uh, Some of them, yeah, yeah, for sure. I agree with that. He's just – he's older, though. Yeah. He's 29, where – 
Them Davis is 25. 25 Mooney's yeah. 27. I'm definitely with you on Lazard. I think he's overrated as hell. Mm-hmm. He just was given that contract because Rodgers is ever with you the Jets. You know how it goes, bro. Brandon Cooks is getting 10. He's 31. Brandon Cooks has, has been damn productive. Yeah, it's, that dude at age like a fire and wine, man. That missed 1,000 yards. I, yeah, so I don't think 10 or 11 would be unreasonable for like a two- or three-year deal. I just think it's just crazy. Let's see, let's take this cut. And we're going to extend it longer, though. Because I'm like, if he could take I'm like, I don't I don't see why he would want to do that. You could just stay in Denver, play out the rest of your deal. He says he wants a new deal, though. That's, yeah. that's the monkey wrench in the situation. Yeah. Or maybe give him more guarantee. Yeah, like you said, give because him more guarantee up front, but less as I'd a also total. be fine yeah. with just trading for Sutton right now and just leaving the contract as is. Yeah. All right, we'll deal with the 17 cap hit, but we could easily cut you next year. What did he do I'd last be fine year? with that, do, but again, what, if he's he worried about year? the contract. What, what, let's see what he did last year, bro. Uh, it was like seven or 800 yards hmm. off the top of my head. Seems like he re- likes Russ. You know what? He's only 28 years old. Mm. He's going to be 29 middle of the season. Mm. Man. Played in 16 games last year. 15 year before that. 17 year before that. Yeah, he's 7, 800, 7, 800. Yeah. Only got one one K season. Yeah, had a Pro Bowl. Ten touchdowns last year though. Yeah. Only on fifty nine tar or fifty nine catches on ninety targets. Uh he had a hundred targets the year before that, sixty four catches, hundred okay. I could live with that as our yeah. wide receiver too. I could work. That could work. That could definitely work, man. Has a prior connection with Russ. Yeah. Relatively quiet from what I've seen. I haven't seen a ton of nonsense with him. No. Heck, you heard more from Jerry Judy with the Steve Smith than, you know, Cortland Sutton. Yeah. I'm fine with trading for him. And it wouldn't cost us that much, I don't think. Mm. Denver in rebuild mode. Sutton, obviously. Yeah. Things aren't going exactly right with him there. Something's I mean, off, right? Yeah, I think he probably wants out. So, yeah, I th- late round pick, get Sutton. Take on that cap hit. Maybe Omar Khan does some restructuring. Looking good. We got yeah. some wide receiver security. I'd take him over Tyler Boyd. I'd I take was him, literally about to ask I'd you, take him would over you take all him, the bro? wide receiver options in free agency right now. Huh. He's so, not no, no, as no, good no, as no, Ayuk no, 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 wait a minute. But, I was going to say, when you say free agency, are you talking about open market or are you talking no, about T. Higgins and Ayuk? Okay. Not T. Okay. Higgins and Ayuk. Strictly free agency. Like Odell. Yeah, the guys Boyd, that we'd have to like, go sign, not DJ trade for. Shark, yeah. Those guys. Okay. I take him overall. Yeah, respect. Just for a late round pick. It can't be. What What did Judy go for? Judy went for peanuts. Yeah. He went for like a fifth or a sixth, right? I thought it was a six. But then he got the deal, though. Yeah. That's the thing. Sutton says he wants a new deal. Mm hmm. I'm not paying you more. You said Judy you got years. 17. Yeah. Stupid. <laughs> That's the Browns, though. <laughs> the Browns and the Browns, man. <clears throat> yeah, fine by me. Whatever. Yeah, I personally don't want to pay him 17. But no, I definitely what, think like that's what that, his bro. cap hit is right now. I'd take that on if yeah. it's just a late pick and, all right, we just got to deal with the 17 this year. That's it. And now, then it's a, 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 do you have any concerns, though? If GP doesn't take that next step, you essentially got Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy all over again. I don't, <laughs> I don't like that because comparison. That was no, no, I don't like that you comparison. You don't like that No, I can't. No. Pickens, no, he's incapable of being Jerry Judy. Uh, no, all right, I'm just saying if he doesn't go to the next level, we've seen him where we've seen him. In this scenario, he has to take that next step, though. I don't think Judy's even hit what Pickens did last year. That's my thing. Pickens, Pickens was really good last year. I, do you, I'm saying Jerry G doesn't have a season, though. That's what I'm saying. I don't know if he's got over 1,000, to be honest. Sure. Worse hands than Pickens, for sure. I would definitely agree. Yeah, less reliable. Mm-hmm. Either way, what I'm saying is it feels light. What? If The room. Yeah, it would feel light to me a little bit. Pickens man. and Sutton. If, he, if Pickens don't take that next step. But if Pickens does, then we're good. 
But this is the combo that we've had in the reverse order of when we're talking about bringing in an Ayuk or bringing in a Higgins or even would you draft one of these receivers early on? If you're not confident that that can take, you know, if he can do that or he will do that, those are, you know, the combos with. And it's like, could you live with it if it's him and him? Whereas well, if it was Ayuk and him, we're saying to ourselves, we still feel dang good about Brandon Ayuk in his production that if this doesn't get any better and this is just who he is, that he can still carry us, he can still hold us down. T. Higgins, if this never gets better, T. Higgins can still carry us, T. Higgins can still hold us down. That's kind of how I'm looking at this right now with Cortland Sutton. I'm like, if he doesn't, do we feel that he can? Uh, Because we know the other two, we say yes. Right. That's why he's the lesser option between the guys that are potentially available for trade. I just think Pickens is that dude. That's that's the thing. I I think adding Sutton, to me, is... Just kind of like some house money because I even said before, I think we could live with the receiver room as is, mm-hmm. given Pickens takes the next step. Yeah, like th- I think that's the catalyst for all of this. Like if you're trading for a court and sudden, you still do need Pickens to elevate. Right. So, but I would say the same thing too. If we don't trade for any of these guys and we just draft the receiver in the second round, okay. Like we need Pickens to elevate. Yeah. But as long the as only you feel two like options where elevate, I guess you then, don't need yeah. is the Higgins or the Ayuk. Yeah. But I still think Pickens will and should elevate in that scenario as well. He should. Like, there's there's no reason for him. You know how there's it happens, There's literally though. no reason but outside of him I'm getting his you. own way. But, we, you know, no we, we do this every year, though. We do this every year. It did every, you know, obviously we come back and we're like, oh, that dude actually did not do what we thought he was going to do. Or he did not take that next step to being great. He just kind of stayed at really good. You talking about Claypool? Yeah. Yeah, I think Pickens is already better than Claypool. Respect. Like what Claypool I would did agree. in his first two years. But Claypool's first two years, bro, we were all in here like, yo, he's about to take another step. I know. And then before we knew it, he was traded, gone, and everything, they, it's a whole another variation of him now, man. I think what helped Claypool a lot was having Big Ben here. Whereas Pickens with some – up and down quarterback play, particularly yeah. last year, still put out eleven hundred yards. So yeah, I already think Pickens has eclipsed like Claypool's development okay. being here. It's just yeah, can you be? Can you legitimately be top five in the league now? Because yeah. if we asking for these, I can't see Pickens getting worse. Elite, that's what I'm saying. I don't. I'm not, I don't think and don't. Yeah, I hope I ain't come off as like him taking a step back. I'm just simply saying if he never. Grows from what we currently see him as. Throw it up to him or back shoulder dude, right? Occasional overall. Like, that's kind of where he is. If it never grows from that, can we still survive and feel great this season if it's Cortland Sutton? You know what? I actually I think he's the one player that of like all these scenarios Mm -hmm. that Yeah, I think I think you could. Like, Higgins and Ayuk, those are unique in terms mm-hmm. of, like, you're not relying on a Pickens uh, breakout year as much, right? If you're signing Boyd or all those other free agent guys, I, st- I still yeah. am talking about drafting a dude. Yeah. And then if you're drafting a dude... Now you've essentially loaded up the wide receiver room even more. If you're still signing a T, Boyd, and drafting something in the second round, right? Yeah, I'm just, yeah, so let's say we don't sign anyone or don't add anyone to the receiver room and we end up drafting a dude. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like Sutton is in that kind of conversation. I think he's the one receiver that where I'm like, I don't think we actually need a drafted dude. I think okay. he can replace that early pick for us. Okay. Like if Pickens gives us the same exact year last year and then Sutton gives us like 800 yards or something and mm-hmm. good target for Russ in the red zone, maybe gets us like eight or nine touchdowns. I think I think we're all right as an offense because I think we're going to be running the ball pretty damn good. Muth yeah. is going to get his work. I could live with that. It'll sure. be could it be a little disappointing? Maybe if we're winning games and pounding the rock. I don't care. For sure. What do you think? I think I'm it, good with going with side. Essentially, if we trade for side, yeah. I'm good with going as this is our receiver core. Yeah. Into 2024. 
So to me, if we go with Sutton, I still think we can get it done, but I do feel like it puts a lot of pressure on GP taking another step forward. Not saying that we couldn't still win with him being where he's at right at 1,000 yards and Sutton right at 700, 800 yards. We could still make that work, but essentially that's what we had last year. 1,000-yard receiver in GP, a dude that was around 800, 900 in uh, DJ. And it still, at times didn't feel explosive still at times we felt limited offensively now we know we had other things at play but that's kind of how I'm thinking I'm just like I don't know if I want to just take the approach of not bare minimum but if I could really upgrade it and I can afford to do it and we're not talking you know five years then we're talking maybe a one to two like I need it right now why not go get that one and that's kind of why I'm like, I would rather go and get an IU or a Higgins if I'm going to make the move than going to get a Sutton. Because I feel like with Sutton, I personally would still probably draft another receiver. I would too, but later. I, I wouldn't be as determined to get a guy in the first or second round. Okay. Like, yeah. I'd be fine with drafting a McCaffrey or someone in the third. Oh, okay. So I thought you was about to say like McCaffrey's in like the six. I'm like, I can't wait McCaffrey that long. I feel fourth. like I got to go second, third, like – I'm not as pressed in the second, but I feel like I still want to get a receiver or yeah, get somebody in that. Thought, I wouldn't man. be opposed, but I don't think it would be as big of a need anymore. Yeah, respect though, because our receiver room would look mm-hmm. pretty damn sick if we got like picking Sutton and like a McConkney or something. Uh, I would agree. Be pretty cool. Yeah, I definitely would agree. It would, it would make it a lot easier for them quarterbacks, man. But then, it, then the question is, yep. What didn't you draft to get him? Yeah. Do we have our center? Yep. <laughs> when do we give up? Did we? Every as day. long as we get the center, I think it could be dealer's choice yeah. for receiver, cornerback, tackle for your next pick or next couple picks. Mm. Do whatever you want. Just get yeah. the center. I think that then we'll be playing with house money. Yeah. And that is dependent on Sutton because right now, or just bringing in another receiver beforehand. Because right now, I feel like we do got to get a receiver early. Mm-hmm. I feel very strongly about that. Otherwise, we limit it offensively. And we don't want to be limited with Mr. Unlimited. Again, I, I think we can live with what we got right now. But if you can get a dude in the second round, if you can trade for an Ayuka Sutton, any any one of these dudes, it only helps your offense. Yeah. You don't want to hurt it like Canada was doing all last year. Yeah. Bring weapons in. Open it up. Mm-hmm. Be versatile. Talent. You all the things, all the things Canada in. wasn't doing. Well, you know, they, they said it was a package deal. Just remember that. What? The the, the two that are no longer. No. It was a package deal, bro. Not a package deal. It's a package deal, bro. It's <laughs> not a package deal. <laughs> it's just, it's, they remodeled the whole room, bro. They remodeled the whole room, bro. It's, it's remodel it, bro. We, we're, we're sick of both of this. Just remodel everything. Nah, they got rid of them at different times. Everybody, 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 everybody. No, yeah. not a package deal. So Canada said, oh, had to go. They first. said, "They said, hold on, you upset? You said you upset? You want to? You know what? You first start. You only come. Go on, Philly, there, bro. Go, I got you, bro. <laughs> yeah, that's what they said, bro. That's what they said. All right, we're well, we going back to these. Uh, yeah, then we got a couple left, or a couple that just came in. Then after that, we will get to a couple of these fine mocks, and then get up out of this thing. So I'm not late for my little man's first baseball game tonight, bro. Number ten. For the Angels, let's go. Let's go. War paint. A to A style. You have to admit, Watson hasn't been the same since he can't go back to the massage therapy sessions. Because they say, you know, I get massages. All right? I get massages. They they help with stress. They help, you know, relax your body. So that's not, yeah. That, but, uh, yeah, man. He got to draw a line, all right? I don't know. Is he banned officially from, like, ever getting a massage again? I don't know how that works. <laughs> no, seriously. Like, you know, like, if you were accused of, like, something, you're like, bro, you probably should never go back around there. Yeah, what he was accused of is, like, a hot. It's hot. So it's like, but you do need massages, to like, to keep playing this game and take care of your body. Yeah, you go need the massages. And not once a week either. We need multiples. Like, I still have to get my massages. I was like, can you not get massages anymore? <laughs> that kind of sucks but if you did that this cause and effect if that day man you did something to enough people to at least it was the question was raised okay so clearly yeah but man that would definitely suck bro that would but dang you lose your right to vote when you get in trouble sometimes but it's like i get it bro it's, dang, 
No massages for you now, man. Just cause and effect. Fish momentum. What's good, yo? The boys are back in town. Let's go. Also says Ambition Live this Friday at 8 p.m. Hashtag Let's Rivers Casino. Go. And it's also free. Big time on the free. You heard what he said, man. So pull up on him, man, if y'all ain't doing nothing. Friday at 8. Pull up on him. Phantom TV, can we get a Jermaine Burton breakdown? Ooh, respect. I ain't ready for that today, but I will get you, though. I'll take a picture of him right now. Yeah. Oh, that's that receiver from yes. Alabama. Yes, uh-huh. That's it. I have not watched him to that extent to give you that breakdown. So, Libby, I got to run that back, man. Yeah. yeah, he doesn't seem bad. No. Did some more research. I might mm. be off of my Troy Franklin take. Okay, I'm listening. Yeah. Maybe not as good of a route runner as I thought he could be. This guy. Might be a little too small, too, frame-wise. He's a fast guy. He wins with speed. He kind of reminds me of like Jalen Hyatt a little bit. Uh, was that Tennessee last year? Yeah. Yeah, like, I might be off on, yeah. on that a little bit more. A good still, player, though. Yeah, still like him, but maybe the McConkney yeah. or someone else from Georgia. Or, no, no he's, from, he's from Georgia. Another yeah. another receiver, you know, from uh dude from Florida. Coleman, uh, maybe, maybe, hell, maybe even Roman Wilson. Uh, yeah, I watched some Coleman because I know he's yeah, we, one, in one, one of, of the these mock drafts yeah. coming up. I watched him too. I yeah, I thought about that. He's a little slow, but yeah, I, like I feel like for Coleman, he is going to have to be a great catcher of the football, like GP. If you don't generate a ton of separation, bro, you you not fast, fast, like bro, you gotta catch everything. Like you look at uh, was it Brian Thomas? You look at um. Marvin Harrison, it's like them dudes generate separation, but they big speed. It's like you can't be big and not speedy and not have great hands. Like you got to have one or the other. And it's like when you get the combination, you get the freaks. That's what we talk about Harrison and Thomas. But it's like, yeah, that's that's the one with Cole. And I'm just like, yo, as long as you can consistently catch that ball, it could work. Because he is a big body. Yeah. He it's just like looks playing uncomfortable Madden, at dude. times, the one I watch him. Like, I don't know, like – like he's an athlete, he's a great athlete. Don't get it wrong, but at times it's like his timing looks off. Like jump, boom, it's like, uh, like I don't know. I just, yeah, that could be just me. But I, I don't know. It's just like yo, you learning to be a big player right now, and he's not all the way developed in terms of like playing as a big body guy. So I'm just like, yo, it makes me a little hesitant. On him. Like you said, unless you're coming down with everything, right. that's tough to trust yeah. if you're a quarterback. If yeah. you ain't getting open, it's you like, see what I'm how saying? can I be throwing to you? I'm, I'm being serious. It's the, almost I'm, like Madden. I'm, I'm telling you the truth, bro. If you're a receiver, you're not mm-hmm. getting open, I'm not passing you the ball. No. <laughs> unless you're tall, let's say in, in Madden. Yeah. I'll, I'll use it as an example again. Mm-hmm. Unless you're like Plexigo Barris in Madden or something. I got high yeah. point and you're always going to come down with it. Mm-hmm. GP, you making the freaky catches, right? Yeah. You got the you you're got the mismatch that. on the yeah. small corner, whatever you're doing it is. That. Yeah. But it's Outside like, of that, if you ain't getting the separation, that's bro. tough to trust. And that's the reason why we talked about just the targets that DJ would get. Pickens, like, Pickens comes down with everything. And so that's why we, that. we're like, yo, you're putting it over there more. But even as the quarterback, like you said on Madden, you can trust them all you want. But how often are you going to target that? Are you throwing it 10 times? Or are you on occasion throwing that thing? No, Versus if you can see it, it's like, yeah. yo, I'm going to target the one I can see way more than, all right, we just want to take a shot right here. I'm going to take a shot. That's a different yeah, combo. It's probably 50 50. Yeah. Come down with it. Yeah. No, let me pass it to the guy that's beating his guy by a couple mm-hmm. feet and this is going to be a 90 percent chance of a completion yeah let me go with that route yeah but coleman still coleman's still a good play don't like he's i in, said we're just critiquing yeah, man yeah he's like, intriguing yeah. but i always feel like we got to like preface that man because people be getting like offended like yo man you said such such suck like yeah we never said he sucked we just said this is what he needs to be better at it this is what we are hesitant about or we don't like about his game it's but why it's he's still not getting t- drafted top exactly. five like marvin exactly Harrison. because he has the same size but it's like yo not as fast, doesn't create the same separation, and does at times just look not uncoordinated, but just off. Like, yeah. Mm. Sierra Nation on Fire. Anyone got questions on Trevor Bauer? He got a YouTube channel. If anyone got questions on him. Oh, I thought he was. Shout out. Shout out to Trevor, bro. Shout out, man. I mean, you know, shout out. Is he posting his, like, highlights? I from don't know. I don't know. That's why I was kind of nervous about shit. I, I don't in? know. Yeah. Right, man, but he's standing out the way, standing out of trouble. Yeah, maybe I don't know. Maybe he's yeah. talking about uh, 
like why he's still good or like why he still has it. I yeah, I have no clue. I, yeah, but maybe that's he's just telling you to go there. Maybe starting see a podcast. what Trevor Bauer has to say. Yeah. Push momentum draft party. Can't wait to see you. Hashtag Mr. Jack Myers Jr. Let's go. Let's go. Yes. You know who's an expert on Coleman probably is Rod Dallas. He's he's big Florida State guy. Oh, so good maybe call. he can give us a break. Yeah, shout out to him. Shout out to him. He's for still that, in man. the house. Absolutely. Yeah, when he said to the draft parties they came away, I was like, bro, which part of the which which draft part? Which one? Which day? And now I just remembered I was like, he's probably talking like our stream, bro. Yeah. But it's like we got yeah, it's busy, busy weekend, D. It's gonna be a busy, busy weekend. It's gonna be a fun weekend. But it's gonna be a busy, busy weekend next week. Shout out to the draft though, bro. Shout out to the draft, man. They got I, I get to host some stuff, bro. I got like multiple days of hosting now. I'm just like, oh, I'm excited. But I'm like, yeah, this is a lot. This is about to be a weekend. So <sighs> when in doubt, man, you know what we do. Have fun with it, man. Gotta have fun. All right, all right. So let's see. We think we got one fun. Yo one. Young. Yeah, says, shout out to Yo will Young. Be first, but has character issues. Now, when you say character issues, what what are those character issues you're referring to? Like how character are these issues? Yeah. Type in red, Jermaine Burton, red flag. <laughs> so because yeah, yeah, this, 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 you know, it's just a wide variety of uh, of issues and red flags, man. Yeah. NFL Draft Insider reveals major red flag with Alabama star Jermaine Burton. What could it be? Four star recruit, 58th best player All right. in the 2020 class coming out of high school. Okay. Where's this red flag? All right. NFL draft analyst Dane Brugler explained why, despite Burton's talent, there are some legitimate concerns around the league about his maturity and coachability. Okay. Talent's there. It's a matter of consistency on and off the field. He's been to six schools in eight years, as one NFL scout put it. He was on mm. the shit list of the coaches for both Georgia and Alabama. Mm. Uh, I didn't know he went to two schools in college. But, yeah, I guess, what is that then, six? Yeah. He went to four different high schools then, too. God dang. Why? All right, that's that's what they're saying. Yeah. Maybe you got commitment issues. Just, it happens to there, man. It's like that sometimes. Yeah, the production's there. Production's there. You're going to Alabama, Georgia. You do have the talent. You're number 58 coming out. I mean, he is being talked about being a second round pick. Yeah. So I think. Don't think Yo Young's that far off. I respect on that, man. Maybe if he's the more buttoned stuff up, is he, real. Yeah, if that's he's real, bro. Up, maybe he's just going first. Like when we talk about that attitude, that locker room cancer, that matters, bro. That's another fast pass to get you up out of here, man. You you tripping in that locker room or you making bad decisions and we just can't trust you? Not not like how future and Metro when they gave you that, you know, the we still don't trust you. We ain't going that one. No, 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 that one just yet. That was fire still. Still, still bumping it, deep. still bumping it. But it's like, yo, we got to be able to trust you, though, man. I think I'm on the uh, no future. Mm, okay, okay. I wasn't really listening to him Respect, beforehand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So lean into it, bro. Rust, lean I'm, into it. There you go. Yeah, definitely not listening. Hey, lean I'm into not going to go out of my way to listen. Lean, lean into it, bro. You, you, yeah. you listen to it. We don't even know it. That's the beauty of it, man. So, so there ain't no worries, man. Hey. <laughs> no, you, you throw it on in here. <laughs> hey, man, you go to the stadium, you go ahead. <laughs> I'm not pressing play on it. How yeah, yeah. I was say, yeah, you you don't press play, so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm just, not I'm not liking it whenever you play. Boom, there you go. I'm like, ah, don't no smile when you hit. Yeah, I'm not. No, no smile. Yeah. Nah, I'm thinking about Russ. I'm yeah, like, you ain't in here cooking up. You ain't scraping quarterback, the pot. Man. Nah, uh, respect man. three. Mm -mm. Nah. All right, let's get to these uh, what mocks, right? <clears throat> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. That's the fresh four o'clock hits, man. We rolling deep. We rolling. All right. Let me get activated real quick. Make sure I'm in the pocket. No, I'm supposed to be in the pocket real quick. Because, you know, I'll mess up when I'm in producer pocket, Deke. All right, here we go. Here we go. I almost tricked it all the way off, though. Don't you worry, baby. Now we back. Now it is time to talk some fan mock drafts. So hit that like button one time for the coach and subscribe if you are new to the channel. Now, on the front end of this part of the discussion, everybody's mock don't make it. We know this, man. Now, it's not because we're judgmental. It's just because it's a lot of mocks that come in. Shout out to Moats Winners at gmail.com. That is the place to send them. But for those mocks that do not make it doing the live that me and D get to talk about or even the solo streams that I do on occasion, right? When I'm talking about some of those mocks, you can always check out the website, arthemotes.com. We do put a lot of them that do get submitted that don't make the show up there, man. So if you or any of your peers want to check everybody's workout, you know, give some real life grades. That's the spot to check it, all right? Arthamos.com. Okay, okay. I like it, I like it, I like it. Okay.
Okay, okay, okay. So let's get to this first mock, man. It is with Malachi Special. I butcher your last name every time, but you know it's all from the heart. I like it, baby. I like it. So first round, he went with Tyler Guyton. Big office tackle. Uh, yeah, excuse me. Office tackle out of Oklahoma. I was about to say uh, tripping. I was about to say Alabama. Lord. Out of Oklahoma. And then after that, man, at 51 overall, Zach Frazier. Still out of West Virginia. 62 overall, Roman Wilson. And I forgot to preface, uh, he did trade back um, from 20 to 30 in the first round. That's what he, that's how he was able to pick up the additional pick in the uh, second uh, 62 overall. So from there, he drafted Roman Wilson. Then at 84 overall, he went with Cedric Van Pran and or Sam Pran Granger. I did not know he had Granger on the last part of that. All right. Then at 98th overall, uh, Tavondre Sweet, uh, or Tavondre Sweat, excuse me. Then at 119, Jeremiah Trotter Jr., linebacker out of Clemson. And at 178, TG's guy, Joe Milton the third. This is a phenomenal draft. Low key straight. This is low key straight. This might be the best I've seen. Actually, Low key straight, bro. Only thing you're missing out on is corner, but loading up on this O line like we are, mm-hmm. and still getting a solid receiver in Roman Wilson, mm-hmm. getting the uh, Tavondre Sweat pick, mm-hmm. and third round the high upside dude there. Obviously, mm-hmm. he's falling down the draft board. He's recently. falling. Yeah, he's falling, falling. Yeah. yeah. Like um. Yeah, he is definitely a, a theme of today's mock draft. Yeah. You guys will see that. <laughs> but yeah, you get some help on the D line there. Jeremiah Trotter, you know I like him. Somehow mm-hmm. he's available for pick one nineteen. One nineteen, I'm like what, hey, fourth round. Yeah, I'm like if that's crazier the case, things bro. have happened. Yeah, if that's the case. The Kobe Dean fell a ton. He was projected yeah. to go late first. You know he went one, to like what middle of the third. So I mean, yeah. if Trotter went to the fourth, it wouldn't be the craziest thing. The only thing for me that throws me off with that is the Jamin Davis out of Kentucky. Remember how he was day going fifth, sixth round in some of these mocks, and it's like mm. nope, early. You're like, oh, wow, I did not see that one coming, man. I think the thing that helped him, though, as opposed to Trotter, is Davis had all that crazy stuff going for him at the combine. With yeah, him. he ran crazy fast. Yeah, the athleticism. Slow, yeah. I think that's why he was moving up. Initially, I think people had him lower. Yeah. But, yeah, a team that falls in love with the athleticism and yeah. sees that and says, oh, we could, we could mold you into a really good NFL yeah. player. Like they'll they'll take a chance on someone like that. Whereas Trotter, I don't think he's got all that athleticism yeah. stuff. He's more He's a good player a though. Fo- uh, yeah, a really good football player coming out of Clemson. Almost like Dean, man, cuz Dean was undersized. Mm-hmm. There were questions about him translating. So I, yeah, I I could yeah. see a Trotter falling potentially. I could see it. Yeah, I, I would like feel that way maybe though, for bro. like a Peyton Wilson though. I could see okay. him going early because of yeah. All that athleticism Bad, but stuff. Even, yeah. But he's projected, what, second, third, mm-hmm. potentially? I like this. This is probably bro. the best draft I've seen. I was going to say, I like this. I even like the fact you went Frazier and turned around and went Van Pran because, number one, we're going to find out of the two. Yeah, we're projecting who we think is better, but when you actually get them here, go find out who's better. But I also feel like I got great depth regardless of whichever one beats out who. And both of these dudes have the ability to play guard as well. So if it ever comes down to injuries or contract scenarios, I feel like, you know, I will still have some type of leverage with these dudes being under contract for the next four years. Um, Like that, Roman Wilson, definitely like him, man. Yeah, bro, this is a sweet draft, bro. That's a solid <laughs> ass. Fire trap, bro. I give it an A. What y'all saying in the comment section, man? Let me see what they talking about in the comment section. Shout out to Malachi, though, bro. Yeah, this one's pretty Dr. clean, Dr. Larea says C. Rod Dallas say B plus. Quan Summer says A for real. Okay. <clears throat> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think my only complaint could be uh, corner. Instead of taking Zedrick Van Pran, yeah. take uh, take a corner. Jaren Jones maybe. Out Respect. Of Florida State. Yeah. But I'm not complaining. I kind of like loading up on the yeah. O line. I don't. I don't see it as that big of a negative. Young boy, 24 gives it an A. We could pick up. Chain and slot. We could pick up another yeah. slot corner in free agency if we really wanted yeah. to. Mikey kind of went with you. He says B. Could have went a corner instead of extra center. I still give it an A, though. Yeah. Like, I think he's playing that into his B grade. Yeah. I'm, I'm still sticking with A. Yeah, I'm saying to myself, I actually have two centers, but I also have two dudes that can play guard as well. So I have I think- put on multiple hats for both of those guys. But I have something that I did not have prior to the draft, which are legitimate centers. And James Daniel is in the last year of his contract. Mm-hmm. 
So maybe you're going to kick Van Pran out to right guard for next year. Yeah. And we've also... He might be better as a guard, honestly. Yeah. But we've also had some of the crazy fortune of, like, yo, we don't deal with a lot of injuries on our O-line. Like, outside of Chooks doing what he, you know, said what he said, we would have had the same starting unit for two years in a row. Outside, or say you might have switched them out, excuse me. But that's the part where I'm just like, dang, man, how long does that last? Hope it keeps lasting, but doesn't hurt to have quality people. Doesn't hurt to have quality depth, and doesn't hurt to have a second center. Somebody just, you know, almost hedge your bet, so to speak, man. Yeah, loading up in the trenches. Yeah. Respect. I like this one. All right, all right. Shout out to Malachi. All right, next one, we got the homie Zachary Figueroa. Shout out to Zachary Figueroa. And he, uh. I will preface this. I should pull up his email. But my man said, he said he was going to make sure we got wide receiver talent. That was his thought. He was like, F, we're going to be able to score points, and we're going at him. So he went Brian Thompson Jr. in the first round, 20th overall. Dog. Went with Malachi Corley, 51, wide receiver out of Western, Western Kentucky. Deeks, homie. Dog. Then from there, at 84th overall, Tavondre Sweat, Texas. Dog. Then, 98th overall, Andrew Phillips, cornerback out of Kentucky. Then at 119, Mason McCormick, South Dakota State Jack Rabbits. Shout out to the South Dakota State Jack Rabbits. Offensive guard. Then he went Travis Glover, tackle out of Georgia State. And Sione Avaki, safety out of Utah. Heavy handed on the wide receivers here. Now, you got some dogs, though, because Malachi Corley, he can definitely go. And Brian Thomas, I see why, you know, people are trying to want to talk themselves into him being the guy. I get it. They nice. Yeah. We need a center. I'm about to say, this is way heavy handed. This though. is a fun draft. This is way heavy handed on receiver. It's, it's, it's yeah, that, that's a great, it's fun. I like how you put that. This, this is, a is very definitely fun, fun. draft. But we need a center. Yeah. So, listen, uh, me, you know, 10 years ago or something, would be probably thrilled with this draft. Give me the receivers. Yeah, just give me all the talent. Like, for example, whenever we drafted Pouncey, I wanted Des Bryant. Oh, yeah, you did say that. I wanted Des Bryant so bad. Des Bryant fell to us, and we passed on him and took Pouncey. I was pissed. So this this would be one of those type of scenarios. Brian Thomas falls to us. Yo, Just give me Brian Thomas. This could be like when we did Najee and Moof when we needed a center. It was like, yeah. yo, we need to get still. Oh no, nah, man, go Najee. I'm Mouf getting and older. Get somebody I'm getting different, wiser. Bro. Just yeah. give me the center. Give me <laughs> hey. the born pick. Hey, Deke, you right, man. What, what's going on with you lately, man? I don't know what's going on, man. What, what time you go to bed? Six o'clock now? Yeah. Uh, this is crazy, man. You read the funny papers, so you just open up news every yeah, like that, honestly, man. Yeah, honestly, we're. Uh, crunching into my uh, dinner crazy. time right now like, like what are we doing man how are you not gonna want two fire wide receivers in the first two rounds bro this is brian thomas jr is brian thomas jr not nice to you does brian thomas jr not move your needle when you watch him catch well, the football and run what makes it even people? worse is it's just overkill because you it got super overkill. you got one receiver you got thomas with <laughs> this frazier not overkill. there 51 he's typically available in all these mock super drafts overkill, i don't know if it's he's realistically gonna be there when the draft comes around this next is true week, but yeah this is true Give me Thomas, Zach Frazier, and I think it's I think it's borderline an A draft then. There was no reason for the two receivers. Yeah. We fired out, bro. Rust fire with this wide receiver core. Fire. Yeah, why Protection is iffy. But why couldn't fire. we take Zach Frazier at fifty one? If we can get into a seven on seven competition, we're gonna cook. No O line, just throwing the ball, we're you gonna cook. You gotta trade bro. for it, dude. Yeah. But that's not part of this exercise. This is very true. This is very true. Uh yeah. I like Andrew Phillips. Andrew's nice. We're talking about Sweat being a value there. Mm -hmm. I even like Mason McCormick, man. Shout, shout out to a, a versatile interior offensive lineman, man. Like, I like him. I'm like, you know what, bro? That works. That works. And it reminded me of my, my OG homie. Shout out to Danny Batten for all you South Dakota State University people out there. If you know, you know. I borderline just want to give this an F. Yeah, this was, this was, it was, it was a lot. But I can I give it an F with them receivers, though? Them receivers is fire. I give it a D minus. I'm going D minus. I'm going D minus. I can't give it that. I like the receivers. You missed the main goal, and that's to get a center. He he punted on the main goal. He didn't even think about a center. He was like, bro, I'm good. I'm good, good. Yeah. I'll stick with an F. Shout out to Zachary, though. Zachary, fire your thought process, though, baby. I like it. All right? 
Let's see what the homie S. Dresden sent in. Now, S. Dresden, I don't even know what mock draft simulator you used. It's fire the graphics, though. But I don't even know what this is from. But salute you, all right? So my man S. Dresden, he goes Nate Wiggins in the first round, 20th overall, corner out of Clemson. At 51 overall in the second, he went with Xavier Leggett. No, you know that cat right there. Yeah. No, you know that good. cat. No, you know him, baby. Then in the third round, McKinley Jackson, interior D lineman out of Texas A and M, went back to the South Dakota State, wishing well. Got Mason McCormick in the third round. Interior, they got him listed as a tackle on this, but he's a guard. Um, then after that, man, Braylon Allen in the fourth round, physical running back out of Wisconsin. Jordan Travis, cornerback out of Florida State in the sit or excuse me, yeah, in the sixth round, 178th overall. And then Jalen Ford as his late round, 195 in the sixth round, flyer linebacker out of Texas. Yeah, we missed the plot again here. Yeah. <laughs> Unless I'm missing like are they projecting Mason McCormick to go to center? Is that what maybe that's the thought process? You're right, because he's that would versatile. Have to, yeah, that would have to but be the thought process. You're not feeling great about that day no, one. No, I'm not. No, day one. Not I'm at like, all. That's we're we're questioning Graham Barton. Yeah, that's he's supposed to be a first round. That's pick. Kendrick Green all over again. I'm trying. Yeah, I don't like that one. Mm. I like Wiggins. I like Leggett. But we gotta get a center. I'm sorry. We gotta get a center. I even like the late the the, the middle round flyer on a running back. Braylon, I was like, you know, I ain't tripping on it. I like that too. Physical style runner. Got a little juice. I like the late Jalen Ford yeah. pick, too. The fly on Jordan Travis. Get him in the program. Sid, give us some insurance while we figure out what we're doing with the top end of these quarterbacks right now. It's just tough for me to give any of these a good grade if we don't have a center early on. Yeah, zero center, bro. Zero center. But as, you, as Dresden you can't is in, do the thing where it's like, so, right, we're, we're going to trade for a guy. So we Dresden, haven't done that yet. We, as, we literally don't have a center on the roster. As Dresden, Spencer Anderson, As I guess Dresden so. came back through and he said McCormick is going to be his center. No. That's what he said. McCormick is a center. So he's like, that's going to be his center. At least say you're trading for one. That's what, He's fine. If he's fine. At least say that. With McCormick. I won't accept the answer, but at least say that. Yeah. If he's fine with that, man, that's fine. Because he, he can definitely bump in and play center. You watch him play guard. We, but the same question is that if we, if people are critical of Jackson Powers Johnson snapping the football, how are we not going to have questions just in general about this dude starting day? What is it for? That's well, that's tough. That's tough. Ah, oh, that's tough. Yeah, that's tough, bro. Because I like Mason McCormick. Don't don't have me in here talking about McCormick that's like this, man. Too. I don't want to talk bad about Mason McCormick because I like him. I just don't. I just, I just think some questions with this because. You can be a case, you rather go Van Pran if we go do this. Just like, God. <laughs> I like this it. This might be an F. It's tough, though. How can I give it an F, though? I got Nate Wiggins and Xavier Leggett, right. bro. Like, I got me a corner that I'm pairing up with JPJ yeah. locked down. I feel D-minus. great. Fair. I got Xavier Leggett. Come on, man. Big speed, big ass. Ah. Because even though the last draft yeah, I'm a didn't get back. a center early, my I think my main thing that got him the F was the double receivers. Double receiver. Yeah, it was heavy handed. We didn't need it. Get a center, but even if you're not going to get the center, then, you know, yeah, do something yeah. like what this guy did. Get a corner and a receiver. Like, I, I'm not tripping. I just wish we had a center. To me, ah, uh, you did miss the main objective. That's the problem. We missed the main objective. The main objective is I need a starting center. I need a guy that I can plug in here day one and get me out. Like, like who, who going to be the guys to get me out of these stadiums, man? So, with that, I do, unfortunately, I'm going to go C+. Plus. If, like I said, Mason, I get it, man. I wish it was a different center or at least a true center or at least a guy coming from a bigger school. If I'm going to be doing the go ahead, switch from guard to center, man. Yeah, and come here and start a day. Well, I would, you know, I'd watch for, you know, see was at the ACC if it's Grand Bar. You know, that you've seen some of that South Carolina State tape. It's, it don't all look D1. I'm not saying that dudes he playing because I'm saying the optics of it don't all look D1. It looked different. You watching Duke, or you watching uh, Georgia, or you watching, you know, West Virginia. That's all. But salute, salute. I'll go D plus. I'm talking you myself into Leggett and Wiggins. Those would be <laughs> those would be good players. Boys. Braylon Allen's a good player, bro. He's a good player. Run that rock downhill. Got a little juice in open field. He ain't gonna make you miss now. I'll give him D plus. Dang. <laughs> Jordan Travis, a good little late round. 
Because I, I don't think we're going to be upset with Wiggins and Leggett. Yeah, we feel good about we're those be dudes, upset bro. Not having a center, yeah. I know that for damn sure. <laughs> Yo, boy, 24, he ain't going for it. He said nothing plus about this draft, most. I, I'm, just, I'm just trying. I'm trying, all right? I'm trying. Yeah. Now, Yul Young says Mason McCormick calls the O-line alignments. He could play center. And I'm not doubting any of his above-the-net game. I'm talking about when I watch him. Snapping it. I'm talking about when I'm watching him on tape at South Dakota State playing against Montana in the Montana linebacker on the second level is sidestepping him and getting around. I'm talking about where he's pulling versus Montana and he can't hit the safety that's in the alley on the screenplay. I'm talking about that portion of it because if you can't block the Montana linebacker in space or the Montana safety in space, what you going to do when it's the Baltimore Ravens, man? When it's the Cleveland Browns, when Cincinnati Bengals? And we're asking him in this situation to come in here and start. Not develop, not be a guy. Like, you're our guy. You're our center. I just think that that's going to put him in harm's way, man. That's all. But, like, I do think he's a good player, though. And I don't want to get it twisted. I think he's a good player. In fact, when I watched him, it reminded me of B.J. Finney. That was literally what I said to myself. I was like, you're B.J. Like, you're B.J. Finney, man. You're a good player. You're um, J.C. Hassenauer. Versatile. Can give us some, you know, center guard stuff. Do you want them starting 17 games? Nah. But can they get you out of a stadium? Yeah. Could they give you depth? Yeah. That's kind of how I looked at uh, Mason at this stage. Now, does he develop? Sure, he could definitely develop into more than that. But like I said, that's kind of how I looked at him, man. Like, uh, There's good individual players yeah. in this show. I, I is, even bro. like McKinley Jackson. Shout out depth to McKinley. D-line. Yeah, yeah. shout out to McKinley. But we don't need D-line that bad. The, the first pick of the third for us, the 84th one, like... He, he but we already took we already yeah. took a corner and receiver, so I understand that. Yeah. Like if yeah, if you miss if out Lowe's, on yeah. your center the first two picks, maybe you do just yeah. you know just abort the mission. <laughs> he said, "Oh my dude's gone. I'm just get this yeah. one." I'm like, "Where's Van Pran at in this convo? Is he is he in the convo?" Yeah, maybe he could have been taken instead of yeah. McKinley Jackson. At least, at least you can make me feel better. Yeah, I like it though. Shout, shout out to S. Dresden. They they don't like you. I, I'm gonna give it a C plus. All right, see it. There we go. All right, what well, a final, final mock draft that we're going to react to today. It's from the homie Steel City 7. Now, Steel City 7 has some action, man, in terms of trades, man. Traded back out of that first round. He was like, bro, I don't want to stick at 20. I don't want our 20th overall, nor do I want our sixth round pick either, 195. So he calls up the Washington. They're the commanders right now, I believe, right? No, what are their names right now? They're the commanders right now, <laughs> right? The yeah, commanders. the commanders right now. All right, so he calls up the commanders. He's like, yo, commanders, man, take these picks. We're going to trade back. So takes the second round, 36 overall, along with their second round, 40th overall. So we know 32 picks in the first round. So that's the fourth and the sixth overall. I said that backwards. Fourth and the eighth overall picks in uh, the second round. So with that, went Jackson Powers Johnson at 36 overall. Definitely like that. Then from there, he said, I'm not done just yet, Deke. You see, he's not done just yet, man. So he takes that 40th pick that he got from Washington along with our third round pick, 98th overall. And he calls up Houston. He's like, yo, Houston, what's happening, man? Let me get some picks up off of you. So from there, we trade back, get the 42nd overall pick from the Houston Texans in the second round along with picking up a 86 overall pick in the third round along this with the 123rd pick in the fourth this round along insane. with the 127th pick in the fourth round deke this draft's on steroids deke my man said take a second and a fourth or second and a third and we're gonna go ahead and yeah boost up the income i like it man so with that 42 overall, he got Keon Coleman. Cat, we've been talking about today. Big body, tall receiver, all right? Then at 51, he got a guy that you'd like to talk about, TJ Tampa. Shout out to TJ. Yeah. Physical, will tackle you. Good, good player. Third round, 84th overall, Kalen Bullock. Big time. Like the safety out of USC will definitely hit you in the mouth. Then from there at 86 overall in the third round, Jeremiah Trotter Jr. Give me some pedigree. Then from there in the fourth round, I went with the homie Matt Gonha. Oh, man, I, re- I wish I would have remembered how my man put it in the comment section on how to say it. It's like Spanish, bro. It's like Gahaves. It's like Gahaves. It's something like that that he said. He's like, don't pronounce it like Clavis. Yeah. I wish I could remember it. But anywho, the tackle out of pit. All right, left tackle out of pit. Then in the fourth round, 123 overall, Tavondre. Sweet. And then 
we have it 127. And I say sweet every single time. Lord, sweat. Mm -mm -mm. 127, Mason with two A's, Smith, interior D lineman at LSU, and at 178th overall, sixth round, quarterback out of Florida State, Jordan Travis. What a draft. What a draft. Yeah, this is this is A range. Yeah. For sure. I don't think uh the second trade back is that realistic. This is this is like heavy hand trade, like go crazy with it. I wonder how many times he had to like set it up to get it to happen <laughs> like this too, bro. Cause it's like everybody just falling perfect in place. Draft, yeah, yeah, man. I mean the yeah. only complaint I have really is Coleman. Mm. Pick a different receiver. I would maybe go Robin Wilson over mm. him. Was McConkney there? Yeah, there's a couple guys I'd yeah. probably prefer over Coleman. And that's an early, eh, it's like a mid second round pick. So there probably yeah, were ten, guys. 10 available. picks into it, yeah. Maybe you just preferred Coleman. But outside of that, holy shit. I mean, TJ Tampa, nice. Yeah, you got Trotter. Mm. You got Tampa. You got your center. Hell to pit. We got, got a pit guy. Yeah. Yeah. Mason Smith, Sweat. It's a good draft. Probably Even the late round probably flyer a. on a quarterback, man. This is probably an A. I, I think I prefer the first one over this. Without all the trades and stuff? Yeah. The dude just loaded up on the line. Yeah. Where you got Van Pran, Frazier, Guyton. Then we get a receiver in there, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I prefer that. Obviously, this one you get more names and stuff with this because yeah. of the, the trades and everything. Yeah, I think I prefer the one with the with all the O line pickups. It's tough though because you're you're just getting so many more players here. So maybe yeah. I do prefer this. Yeah, I just don't know. I, I think we got to grade players, this one bro. on a curve though. Yeah, you got a lot of players. We here. We got to grade this one on a curve. But you got O line hope. You got D line hope. You got receiver hope. You got O line dup. You got line back and dup competition. Like, yeah, bro, you got a lot here. So, you yes. Quarterback dup in, in a range. vacuum. Like, I yeah. will take this one over to the first one, but uh, like on a realism scale, I'll take the, the first one. Yeah. I think, yeah, the first one, Malachi. Uh, Aspicia. Yeah. Aspicia. I butcher it every time. I love it. But that's definitely, I think, yeah. Let me put that one back up. Shout out to Steel City 7, though. Let's see what the, what the congregation stand about Steel City 7. Let's see what they say. It's a really good draft. Yeah. Because like, even if I don't like the receiver, or I'm questionable on the receiver, you still picked up so many other names yeah. where it doesn't matter. Yeah. And they're saying, um, not, uh, Cody, Cody Call and, uh, yeah, Cody Carr was saying he doesn't think that Jackson Powers Johnson will be there at 36. There is a case that he could, though, man. They said, like, if teams don't go center in the first round because of the whole conversation of if, like we said yesterday, right, or uh, Monday, if Cooper DeGene is there versus a uh, Jackson Powers Johnson, do you take JPJ because of the position or do you take Cooper because of the talent? Nate Wiggins, right? Brian Thomas, any of these type of players is going to be part of the conversation here. So there is a chance that those guys do fall, but the reality is they probably won't fall past pick 45 because in that range, that's the second round, a lot of teams that are picking early, that are picking the wide receivers, the quarterbacks, and some of these other spots, they're still going to be coming back needing to get centers. And that's where we're saying that it's a very strong possibility that we can't sit at 51 and get one of these centers if we pass on them in the first round. So there is that conversation of, yeah, you might have to trade up. If you don't go first round, there is a strong, strong, you know, probability that we're going to have to move back up. Now, what does that cost? That's what you put yourself into because all these other teams are also going to be knowing that, yeah, you need to move up. So you need to move up more than I need to move back. And now we kind of get ourselves in a little bit of a position that we might not want to be in. I like the move back scenario. Yeah, move back, get the extra pick if you. Yeah, you know, it's where you're on. drafting late in the first or yeah. early in the second, and like you said, get an yeah. extra pick, which would probably that could work. Probably be at least a second or third. Yeah. It'll be a valuable pick that, that we could can definitely get. work, man. Just make sure you get a center. That's yeah. literally it. Yeah, that's the goal. All right then. All right. 
Shout out to Steel City 7, though. All right. And shout out to everybody that sent in a mock draft. I like it, man. I like it. So with that being the case, let's see. We got Supers left. We got a couple. Then after that, man, we get up out of here. And then it's baseball time, D. I'm baseball dad tonight. War paint. I'm ready, bro. Ready. Official momentum once. JPJ's evil twin, Jason Powers Johnson. <laughs> or Jason Powers Jackson. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't Jason do Powers Jackson. He's a JPJ. He's his cousin is in the, in the multiverse. That's all. Fish momentum. But I'm with says, you on that Happy though, 30th I'm with anniversary you. to the Lion King. Mm. Absolute classic, baby. If you know, you know. Thirty years old. That's it. Have you? you have I, I would have guessed it's way older. You've seen it though, right? I have seen that. There we go. All right. We yeah. are. Right. We are. Right. I've been alive. I was alive when Lion King came out. Dang. I don't know why the movie was older than me, but I guess I'm older than Lion King. That makes me feel really old right now. I don't, I don't know. That's crazy. Shout out to Lion King though. So it came out in the '90s. Yeah, shout out to Lion King. Sean McCartney, how do you feel about the draft day trade rumors with the Bills? I don't hate them. You know that. Bills men are, yeah, they might be moving up, man, because they're in that position where they want to get a receiver, and they know it's a lot of talent in terms of wide receivers in the first round, and it's kind of just at what level do you want to invest in that spot? You could sit at 28 and get a guy. You could trade with Pittsburgh up to 20 spot and get a guy. You might mess around going to that top 10 to get a guy. It just depends on what level they kind of want to go or what direction they want to go with that, but they definitely are going to be players in that first round. And, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see which one they, they end up with, bro. What picks do they got that they can give up? So that's the issue. Not a ton of draft capital, but it's like, man. Because they don't have a second this year, right? right? You can be giving up a first. You go, you swap the first and then probably, you know, one of them thirds, something they like that. They have a couple thirds? Yeah. Okay. Do something like that. Is it uh, I mean, I gotta is pull one them of up. them an early third? Let me pull them up real quick, bro. Let's pull them up. Okay. Yeah. That could make sense. That could make a lot of sense, actually. I would take... Because I know the Bills don't have spots. a ton. Of, the Bills don't have a ton of draft capital this year. I know for a fact they don't have that. Yeah, they picked up the extra second for yeah. next year from the Diggs mm -hmm. trade. Yeah, so they got 28th overall, 60th overall. That's the second round. Then from there they got two fourth round picks, 128 Ooh. and 133. Then they got a fifth, 144. So if anything, if they moving up, it's the first two. Like I said, they packaging something like that, or at first and that fourth. But that's what I'm saying. It depends on which, how far they're trying to move. If you're trying to just move up a couple spots, different combo. You're trying to move to that top 10, you're probably talking about that 60 in there somewhere. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you see what I mean? Sure. But if that's – if you – say you love Malik Neighbors or say you love Marvin Harrison Jr. And you're like, bro, I don't care about any of these other things because I know I got to replace Diggs production. But if that comes in here, we up. That's, you know, that's the combo. Yeah, I'm not feeling great about getting one of those fourths for the mm -hmm. trade back. Yeah. I don't think that's worth it. Mm -hmm. I need at least a third. Yeah. So, yeah, if they're just trying to move up to, like, 20 or something like that, I don't know if we'd be the best yeah. trade partner. Because right. that's, like I said, where they're at. Because they don't feel like – they shouldn't feel like they're forced And I don't want to, future picks either. And that's the other part, yeah, because they could definitely go into that bag. Don't be surprised if they, that same – We're Texas just not a 20... team – I don't think we're a team yeah. that's looking for future picks. No, nah, we now. want now picks, yeah. yeah. Right. Whereas for Buffalo, they can use that same 2025 20, pick they got back from Houston and throw that in a deal with somebody else and move up. And other teams would do that because it would be more appeasing. But you're right. For us, that doesn't help what we want to do right now with Russ or Phil's under these, you know, certain contract situations right now. Yeah. yeah. Like if it was a uh, mid third, am I crazy even thinking too? We could get we could get a late second. How late is that? Maybe that would 60. Yes, I don't know the what end, the precedence is. That's I don't, the back I don't know if that's enough for the Bills, though, to just move up. It would be Not eight for spots. eight spots. I don't see that. Yeah, I think if they're going to do that, they're trying to get into that top top 15, top 10. Would something like that make sense for a team picking later, like the Chiefs or like the Eagles, though, where they give up their second, it's a little bit later, but they you know move up a few more spots because yeah. of it? Like they would go from you know thirty one, thirty two to like twenty five or twenty, yeah, or going old, and then give us, and then they would give us the later spots, second yeah. round pick too. It would yeah. be sixty something. Is there precedence for that? I don't know actually. Yeah, I don't know. Or is it just gonna t take a third to move you up? You just like yeah. I don't know. 
But since it's like a late second, it's a, you could almost say, oh, it's like it's an like early a third. third. Yeah. And if it's if it's a heavy run on those receivers and the Chiefs or whatever other receiver needy teams are out, uh, Cowboys yeah. they're looking for a receiver too, right? Yeah. They want to make sure they get their guy before the Bills might mm-hmm. swoop in and take them. That could be in play. Yeah. yeah. As long as we have a late pick in the first round or very, very early in the second. Make it work. We can make it work. Make it work. Collecting one of those extra picks could be yeah. really worthwhile. Uh, Yo Yong says McCormick is fourth best center and call protections. Oh, no, no. We did talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. Mason, because, uh, yeah, he sent. Th- or maybe I saw it and started talking about that. But I felt like we definitely acknowledged yeah. that part, though. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, man, I'm all for his above-the-neck game, man. I think he's a smart player. I think he knows exactly what he's supposed to know. He gets to the right assignments as well. And to me, man, he wins the majority of his blocks. When I'm nitpicking him or comparing him to the other guys, I was, like I said, talking about just him when he's having to play in space, climbing to the second level, making those blocks on the perimeter that's where you see him kind of struggle and that's where you see him struggle more than Van Pram, which is going to struggle more than Frazier, which struggled a little bit more than, you know, JPJ. And then just depending on how any of us are in terms of being fortune tellers and predicting what Graham Barton would be at this stage, it's like we're anticipating that he would probably be the best at that since he is the most athletic at that. Young Papi Benito asks, will you guys be submitting your mock drafts? Bro, we need to, huh? We should, man, this is the problem. I wanted us to do like a different style of mock this year, but I haven't really sat down and figured it out, like how to logistically do it. But it's like I would love for us to work together as you head coach, I'm GM. Yeah, okay. You know what I'm saying? What what big board together? It's like, yo, who do you like? All right, I like this dude. All right, but you a little more aggressive. Hey, man, I'm kind of chill, kind of talking through it. But I like that. You know what I mean? Just to change that, cause like, Maybe yeah, we, we can, can do talk like, with the chat. Too. You see what I mean? Yeah. So I think that that'd be dope. They could be Weidel. But I'm sure, yeah, it's a third party. He's like, yo, I can't agree. You can't agree. If we can't agree on I'm something, we'll go to the chat. Calling. That's what yeah. we're doing. Yeah. And okay. if we can't agree, we go to the chat. But if we do agree, then it's like, all right, pick the player. Or if I default to you, all right, default to you, or vice versa. But it was like, I think that would be a dope chat. That'd be fun. Let's you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So that's all I was thinking, man. 100%. Yeah. So if not this week, then for certain, we'll do it on Monday. Because I know, like I said, Thursday, tomorrow, no show tomorrow, little man's birthday. More than likely Friday morning we'll do a show, but I got to confirm that once we get done with everything. All right. So, yeah, man, but definitely worst case, we'll definitely do it on Monday then. Yeah, because I was thinking it through. I was like, yo, I think it'd be dope just to switch it up That'd instead of us just doing, all right, I do my mock, you do your mock. And that's, that's like, nah, let's do it together. Let's make this it have to like work as a team. Yeah, and involve the chat with it. Tyler Quattro, Jordan Love signed extension in May instead of the fifth year option. Think Steelers will do that in May as well for Fields or wait and see how Russ does. <sighs> I would love if we did that. I don't know if Phils would do that. And at the same time, I could definitely understand the approach of waiting. But I would love it if if we did go ahead and just take care of that. I would, too. Yeah. I don't think Fields is going to do it. I don't either. Because we're not extending him for yeah. Jordan Love type of money. We would extend him for, like, yeah. Mitch Trubisky type of money, mm-hmm. $7 million or something for the next couple of years. But that locks Fields up, so he's not a free agent after this season. Yeah. Which I'm sure he would like to be. Yeah. It would make sense for the Steelers. It definitely would, bro. Just have a little bit more security in the QB mm-hmm. room. Have a little bit of an insurance policy in yeah. case Russ doesn't do well. But, yeah, there's a lot of questions out there with this quarterback stuff. Man. Yeah. A lot of questions. Yeah. I think ultimately Russ is going to do good, though. Shoot. We're going to find out. He didn't took the first step. First step to getting better is showing up. He didn't showed up to OTAs, man. So we shall see. We shall see. But shoot, man. I think we vibed That's out, it. man. 430. You got Let's roll. go, bro. Hey, it's game day to day, man. Little man got his first baseball game. So wood pink. Dad fan is full engaged. All right. So with that being the case, hit that like button one final time if y'all have not done so for the culture. And if you are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe either. As you see, we do this year round, man. We like to have fun with it though. But either way, whatever you do, stay safe out there. We got anything on the back end? Everybody good? Everybody good? We good? Everything's great. All right. So until next time, baby. Peace.